Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's the only way. <laughs> Fuck. I gotta be careful about what I say. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful. You gotta be careful. You never know who's watching. I need your help with this. Man, I have no idea how to review this game. On the one hand, if I'm completely honest with you, this is gonna be dislike bombed into oblivion. On the other hand, if I oversell some of the game's positives, I'm gonna look like a liar, especially to anybody who watched my streams. Yeah, Cobain, I, I, doing pretty all right. Not that I've done much today other than, you know, just have a horrible poop. Just a horrible, horrible poop. Because I had Mexican last night. Oh, uh, see, this is this is how you know it's a Reddit game. You can't kill the turtles. One of the first things I did in Elden Ring was kill the turtles. Oh boy, it's been a long time since I've made a comment response video. And it's not like I was lacking in opportunities to make one, as you probably know if you've been around here for a while. I was made aware of a response video made by Zero Needs Coffee called the worst God of War Ragnarok review, Synthetic Man. And this guy, I can already tell this guy's a bundle of sticks. I can already tell. As you can imagine, I was having flashbacks to my Doom Eternal videos and the responses that followed. And I won't lie, when I saw this on stream, I was pretty tilted. And this kind of goes without saying, but please do not go to this video and harass this person. The last thing I need is another reason for YouTube to shut my ass down. Yeah, that is a thousand likes. Well, you guys do your job. Dislike bomb the video. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I get in trouble from YouTube. Every one of you come here and dislike this video. <laughs> no, no, I might get in trouble from YouTube. Uh, you, you do what you must, I guess. So a couple days ago, a YouTuber named Synthetic Man uploaded this video. It was a review of God of War Ragnarok, and I made a video responding to his review. He reacted to the video on one of his streams, where at the end of the stream, he encouraged everyone watching to go over to my channel and dislike bomb my video, which is against YouTube's community guidelines and also is a pretty fucked up thing to do. It just kind of shows what type of person we're dealing with. I love how it isn't that like the, the, <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to say tranny version, but the alternate universe version of of Marceline that's like a boy or something. So already we have like an effeminate male character that you're using for your avatar. Really not helping. Really not helping. This is, this is, let me just, uh, just flip up a little bit. Just flex. Uh, show off my, my raw masculinity versus this effeminate twink. Like, what is making you give a fuck about this? I always use Adventure Time characters as my PFPs on my social media because I really liked the show as a kid. And the one for my YouTube channel just happens to be Marshall Lee. I didn't choose this picture because I'm woke or something and like the fact that it's a gender-bent version of Marshall Lee. I chose it because he's voiced by a childish Gambino who I really like the music of. Please stop bringing this up. It has nothing to do with the game. You're just reaching super far to try to find things to insult me. It just looks fucking stupid. So if you haven't played the game yet, I recommend you go check it out. But if you're not able to play it or have an Xbox or something, then you can also check out a video like this, like a full game, no commentary video. I highly recommend you go do that. Don't watch this video. Go experience the game first and then come back. Instead of, you know, playing the game yourself or just waiting until you could get a PS5, he suggests that you watch a full game walkthrough. And the part he's leaving out is when you then pretend you've played the game yourself and have a real opinion on it. Are you fucking kidding me, dude? I hate Zoomers so much. I did not find a single comment refuting any of my major points from the video. I am deeply disappointed with Sony fans this time. If this is the best defense you can muster for the game of the year of 2022, according to you, then gaming is truly dead and it's never going to improve. Because you consumers keep eating this shit up. Don't ask questions. Just consume product and then get excited for next product. So I pretty much lose either way, but at the end of the day, I would rather be as honest as humanly possible. It's pretty much the only policy I've stuck to since the start of my channel. So I've come to terms with the fact that this will likely be one of the most disliked videos I'll ever make in my likely short career on YouTube. The worst thing a video game can be is boring. And Ragnarok is one of the most boring f***ing games I've ever played. Half of this game is either watching a cutscene, 
walking in a straight line, or engaging in one of the game's many hidden loading screens, whether that be rowing a boat, riding a giant yak, climbing a wall, shit we've seen a thousand times, and it gets old. This game does not respect your time. Just like you're not respecting the game's story. You put this section in 8 times speed as if it's a loading screen or something. This is a very touching scene where Kratos talks to his now dead wife in a dream. And you're just skipping over it like it's literally nothing. <laughs> where Kratos talks to his now dead wife. <laughs> he thinks that's like a big emotional moment. No, no. Dude, this isn't real. This is like a parody. Please tell me this is a parody. Like, holy shit. And he's like, oh, look at the subtitles. It's super emotional as you slowly row a boat in a straight line. No, come on, dude, please. I do not fear our child, Faye. I fear for him. He is innocent. We are not. Our failures. We are not who we were. We must be better. This guy's got to be underage, right? Please tell me he's underage. I will, I will retract my statements if he's underage. Do, do we have a confirmation? Like, please tell me he's like, like, it, it, trust. Tell me, please. And, and whatever. Let's just keep going. Let's just keep going. Life in a dream. I gotta stop pausing every two seconds. I'm pulling an EFAP. I really am pulling an EFAP. Why is it so hard for left-wing people to just address the arguments being stated in a video? They have to make up all these motivations and... I don't, you know, it's... Ah, God, it's annoying. He's not left-wing, he's right-wing. I don't believe that. There's no way he would like this woke mess if he was right-wing. No, there's no way that's true, true and Snape. Zero chance. He complains about SJWs and woke culture. Yeah, well then he's just jumping out of bandwagon then because this game is disgustingly woke. Are you kidding me? He's another blue pilled bundle of sticks. You know what I really want to say. Uh, I'll cut this part out of the video though. I'll cut this part out of the video though. You never know who's watching. I need your help with this. And I already know just based off of these criticisms, you already think I hate this game and have no credibility left, or maybe you thought that a long time ago. But I promise you that I am absolutely trying to make my review of this game as fair as possible, despite the fact I despise all of the movie games that Sony's been making for like a decade at this point. They definitely have a lot of good aspects to them, and this game is no exception. So let's just start off with the best part of the game, that being obviously the combat. Now I remember back when God of War 2018 came out that it was pretty controversial, this change in direction. The biggest change obviously being the over-the-shoulder camera, which is still annoying even in this game, honestly. But you do get used to it eventually, and I would personally recommend you turn up the sensitivity on the camera so you can turn around faster. Especially since this game has very generous auto-aim. As for the main combat mechanics themselves, I'd say they're pretty fun. I thought they were fun in the last game too. It does take a while to get going. For some reason, they pulled a Metroid with this game and Kratos just mysteriously has lost almost all of his abilities and gear from the last game. I'm not sure why I expect a Metroidvania style explanation, but I do want to... Uh, I want to know why... He got rid of all the artifacts that we found in the previous one. I mean, is there any reason? The reason why he lost all his shit is explained in-game. The reason Freya never came to their house is because of the stave which stops other people from coming inside. It's like this guy didn't pay attention. See, here's another arrogant comment that completely misses the points in the video. Obviously, there's an explanation for why Kratos lost his equipment. Me saying in the video, for some reason, was me poking fun at Metroidvania games for taking away all your equipment at the beginning. I'm not sure why I expect a Metroidvania style explanation, but I do want to... Uh, I want to know why he got rid of all the artifacts that we found in the previous one. I mean, is there any reason? Isn't it nice how Fimblewinter wore down all the helpful magic we acquired? Yet somehow, new terrors only flourish. 
as if on cue. <laughs> I'm upping my strength. Maybe the enemies will be less spongy what now. What happened to all the armor we made you already? I used it. Well, maybe I can't believe you guys talked me out of hard mode when normal mode is. Huh. Is the combat gameplay the same? Yes. It's ex almost exactly the same. They always find some dumb reason, and God of War Ragnarok is no exception. I don't care whether or not there is a reason. I want to know why he got rid of all the artifacts that we found in the previous one. I mean, is there any reason? It was a criticism of the game design to start you at square one again. Kratos just mysteriously has lost almost all of his abilities and gear from the last game. And just saying that Fimble Winter destroyed their stuff is fucking stupid, let's be real. Isn't it nice how Fimblewinter wore down all the helpful magic we acquired? Yet somehow new terrors only flourish. As if on cue. I am of the belief that you don't have to start the player off with zero equipment, because you should make a sequel assuming people played the previous game. And if they didn't, they can catch up to the mechanics eventually. Just make the early game encounters easy enough that you can still get by if you don't use runic attacks or reposts or any of the other mechanics. Uh, Deathlock997, thanks for five bucks. Cynthia, notice how rune attacks from 2018 are normal attacks here. Kind of cool, I guess. Not really. Kratos should feel like he's getting stronger, not that he was forcefully push back to where he was at the start of the last game. Because it's one of the many elements of this game that makes it feel more like a giant expansion than an actual sequel. And I'm not going to get into a debate about what makes a good sequel versus just an iterative, lazy, Ubisoft-esque $70 expansion. But let's just say Ragnarok did not meet my expectations of a sequel. And you're free to have your own opinion on that. I really don't care. And so the game kind of feels afraid to give you all of the combat mechanics until about 10 hours in, which makes those early combat encounters a bit more boring. It doesn't help that I was playing it on hard mode, which I'll save that for the end since I'm being positive at the moment. But I'd say the combat ultimately feels mostly satisfying. Juggling enemies in the air is fun just like it was in the original games. Runic attacks feel pretty powerful, and the fact that they just use a cooldown instead of some kind of magic meter is honestly more fun to me personally, because then you can use them pretty much every encounter and don't have to rely on magic chests. Kratos also just has a pretty wide range of actions that you can do. On top of having light and heavy attacks and the runic attacks, you can throw the Leviathan Axe, you can use the blades to grab people and pull them to you or pull yourself to them. You can buff the blades and axe with their corresponding element. There's also a meter you can build up by hitting enemies without getting hit yourself that once is full allows you to buff one of your weapons and make all their attacks like twice as powerful, which really feels satisfying and rewarding. Obviously, there's also blocking, dodging, parrying. Now, I will say the parry feels pretty weak until your starting shield gets repaired and then you actually get invincibility frames on the reposts. But before that point, I was very disappointed in the parry. Against many bosses and bosses, you would actually have to parry them multiple times in the same combo just to stop the onslaught, which was honestly infuriating. So, you also have a partner character. In the first game, Atreus would shoot arrows on command. I think he also had a runic summon, but I don't quite remember. So in this game, it's not too much different, except now. Your partner is really good at putting one of two debuffs on the enemy that amplifies your other attacks and debuffs. And it kind of goes without saying, but from here on, I'm going to be getting into spoiler territory for various aspects of the game. I'm probably going to talk about them for the rest of the video, so this is your last chance to leave. So eventually you get a third weapon, a spear that can generate infinite copies of itself, and you can detonate those spears on Triangle. I actually really enjoyed this weapon. Now when you first get it, it doesn't have any abilities, so it kind of feels like shit, which completely ruined the moment. But after you pump some XP into it, it's actually probably my favorite weapon in the game. 
Much like God of War goes to Sparta, playing as a Spartan with a spear and shield just feels right. And the spears that you can detonate in enemies actually juggle them further into the air, and all of the spear's attacks do stun damage, a significant amount of stun damage compared to the blades and the axe. So the DPS for this thing is probably the highest in the game, or at least it kind of feels that way. And the runic attacks I got were pretty powerful as well. So yeah, actually great concept. One of the few alt weapons in this series that actually feels satisfying. The last positive I'll mention are the boss fights, which given this game is 25 hours long, not doing any side content, there's actually a lot of bosses, especially compared to the previous one. I'd say all of the main bosses were at least somewhat fun, with the first Thor fight at the beginning and the Heimdall fight about three quarters of the way through the game probably being my favorite. The Heimdall fight is the only one in the game that required me to think outside the box and actually play differently, so I'll definitely compliment the devs for that. And all in all, it's a solid selection outside of one specific extremely cringy moment in the game, just remember this boss fight on screen here for later when people keep talking about how mature God of War is now. The mini bosses, on the other hand, are a mixed bag. Some of them are pretty great. Some of them, like the Hateful, are just fucking annoying to fight, have random unblockable moves that make no sense. The fucking God of War can't block a random fire skeleton's axe swing. My immersion is destroyed. <laughs> And when you apply that logic to any other game, it just sounds stupid. How can the legendary crime fighter Batman die to a random thug's punch? How can the superhumanly powerful Doomslayer die to a random projectile from a demon? This sucks. Immersion ruined. And die to a random thug's punch. How can the superhumanly powerful Doomslayer die to a random projectile from a demon? This sucks. That Immersion is true, ruined. though. Like, this dude has that is true. literally no- like, this dude has literally no understanding of how video games work. The fucking arrogance of this guy to say, I don't understand video games. I would bet any amount of money i play twice as many as you have, and likely far more than that across my life. The fucking God of War can't block a random fire skeleton's axe swing. My immersion is destroyed. Oh, well, it's ludonarrative dissonance or something, because... We couldn't just have Kratos kill everyone one hit. Well, why not have it like the original games? We couldn't just have Kratos kill everyone one hit. Remember the beginning of God of War 2 where you kill like a hundred uh, Athenian... Well, they weren't Athenian, they were... Before that you fight the Colossus of Rhodes, uh, you, uh, kill a hundred soldiers. I guess they were maybe Athenian type, uh, whatever, I don't give a shit. I feel like in the video I gotta bring up God of War 2, Kratos just killing all these Greek soldiers with no effort. You know, as a god at the beginning of the game, and just compare that shit to this. Oh no, Kratos, the god of war, is gonna get mauled by a bear and die. Like, come on. God of war died to frogs, bruh. <laughs> yeah. In, in the previous game, he fought. You know, essentially the final boss in the beginning of the game, and he's struggling to kill a bear. So yeah, Rakaia Scott, thanks for 10 bucks. Imagine killing Zeus, and then you get mauled by a bear. Yes, Kratos has fallen on hard times. Humans who stand a chance against the god of war? Imagine Kratos getting killed by big human. The god of war gets killed by big human. Well, yeah, Kratos is supposed to be super mega powerful. I know that's easy to forget given how badly this game butchers him. Just remember, I'm holding open, like, Kronos' fingers trying to crush him. Like, he's absurdly strong. But, you know, now he's old and frail and weak. The, 
the good, the good. Kratos is getting killed by a flame skeleton. Let's just fuck. Also, the fact that a blue shield can stop the God of War. I gotta say, the dialogue is horrible. Fucking horrible. The story itself is okay. I don't really like that the driving force is just, oh, let's go find Tyr, the God of War of this realm. That's just not that much of a plot hook, you know? I mean, just compared to the old games, again, like God of War 1, Kratos is... Well, he's been serving Ares for like a decade, and Athena helps him kill Ares, right? So, there isn't exactly much of like an inciting incident, because like fighting the Hydra, I mean, is one of the greatest tutorial missions ever, but it's also, like, ultimately means nothing for the plot, but whatever, it's a video game, right? God of War 2... Zeus betrays him when he ascends to godhood, and he loses his godhood, and he has to get revenge on the gods. Okay, that's that's actually pretty simple, works perfectly. And then God of War 3 is a continuation. He finally, after killing the fates at the end of the second game, he goes to kill the, pan the Greek pantheon. There you go. I mean, easy, just simple. In this, that's not really anything. The plot hook, the only real plot hook here is just that Thor and Odin decide to finally show up. I mean, that doesn't really... There's not... You know, it just kind of happens, I guess. Oh, yeah, my other complaint is the Blades of Chaos got nerfed. They're too fucking weak. They probably do the same damage as the Fists. I don't know if this is supposed to be an AoE weapon, but they don't have nearly the range that they did in the original games, so it doesn't really make sense. Bye, Frost Attacks. Heals over time, but follow-up hits can detonate it for extra damage. Oh boy, more humans that can kill Kratos. Neato. I don't even have a problem with that mechanic. Like, that's a neat mechanic, but why did you give it to Joe Normie with Mace? You know, random guy with Mace can kill the God of War. <laughs> the extreme linearity sometimes. It's only when it's too obvious, you know? Like... Again, God of, the old God of Wars were very, very linear, but they they had like open zones. There's there's too much too much hallways. It's all hallways. Magic Kratos having to pick up health items for every single battle instead of regaining health as he kills people. Well, you had to open up health chests in the original games. Odin's occupation of this realm has its hooks in deep. But there aren't any guards patrolling. Where is the threat? Why hide? Resist and you're made an example of. To keep the rest in line. Self-preservation can outweigh bravery for even the strongest of folk. Fear keeps them safe and alive. Remember in God of War 1 when you could kill civilians to get health back? I mean be. Murdered by Thor. Enough of this. But there's more. I do not care. War with Odin is not the answer. It worked out pretty well in the original games. Just kill Zeus and attempt to kill yourself and fail. That that pretty much that got the job done. Look around you, Athena. The world stands in ruin. Like, there's nothing about this game that is better than the original God of War game. I'm only protecting I know. Mark. I know. And we both know the places protecting your child can take you. This, again, the character assassination is pissing me off. I got, Kratos was unironically more complex, I think, when he was just killing every god. People will say Kratos shouldn't be wearing armor, forgets he was wearing heavy armor after he became God of War. Yeah, it was ceremonial, though, and he immediately lost it at the beginning of God of War 2. Did you play God of War 2, Leonardo? He didn't need the armor. You, you have it for one mission. You don't have to be who you were just because I'm not there. He should be who he was, because guess what? He was winning 
when he was the god of war. The world stands in ruin. I want to remind you that Kratos, well, okay, he didn't do it by himself. He got a bunch of titans from the past to help him, but Kratos just time traveled, grabbed some titans, and then, you know, just did the shit. He didn't have to fucking gather an army or any of this bullshit. He just... I hate this. And the first Berserker fight, which is mandatory, by the way. We can get to it with your spear, I think. This way. That gravestone is a keyhole that looks to fit the hilt you found. And if I'm right, you best prepare for a fight. <laughs> Hey, big guy. Has way too much fucking health. Oh yeah, and I was bumped down to normal at this point too. When I finally managed to beat him, I think it took me three straight minutes of dodging and countering the same four attacks over and over again to actually whittle down his health bar. It doesn't help that filling the stun meter doesn't give you a free execution type of attack on him. It just opens him up to damage for a few seconds. It just opens him up to damage for a few seconds. At least the other Berserkers are end game optional bosses that you can come back and fight when you have better gear. That gravestone is a keyhole that looks to fit the hilt you found. And if I'm right, you best prepare for a fight. They intentionally designed this first one to take this long to kill with only four fucking attacks. That gravestone. So because I'm feeling charitable at the moment, I will start with the more reasonable issues that were brought up with the video, and then get to the less reasonable ones, to put it lightly. Probably the most reasonable criticism of my video is the simple factual inaccuracy I made around the first Berserker boss battle. It is not, in fact, mandatory, you can actually just walk right past it. So why did I think it was mandatory? Well. A few reasons. One, my brain was completely fried at this point in the stream. This was about 20 hours into the game, and I was so unbelievably bored by the game that I had trouble paying attention a lot of the time. So when you come across this fight, it is literally on your linear path to the end of the level. It is right before the end of the second Svartalfheim visit. So when both Kratos and Freya comment on this boss battle right in front of you, that made it seem like it was mandatory. Then the rest matters little. I saw a gateway near here, overlooking the bay. We can get to it with your spear, I think. This way. So when both Kratos and Freya comment on this boss battle right in front of you, that made it seem like it was mandatory. That gravestone is a keyhole that looks to fit the hilt you found. And if I'm right, you best prepare for a fight. <laughs> Hey, big guy. Now obviously in my brain I must have hallucinated the main objective marker over it because clearly it's not there, but it is in fact optional, you can just walk right past it. So here's the question, does this actually matter? Not really, no. It doesn't take away from any of my other points about the boss battle. At least the other berserkers are end game optional bosses that you can come back and fight when you have better gear. How it's a very obvious difficulty spike, and no, it doesn't matter that it's optional because it's placed directly in front of you. 
How many people are gonna fight this boss and then just quit and leave? I would hope nobody, because for all the comments I saw about me having a skill issue, or mad cuz bad, or whatever stupid zoomer gotcha variation we're using this month, I actually beat the boss without quitting. Placing an optional super boss right in front of the player means that you're expected to be able to take him at this point. My issues with the boss have not changed whether or not he's optional. He has too much health and too small a moveset given how much health he has for what point in the game you're expected to fight him. But despite my issues with a few bosses in particular, I'd say overall I had fun with the combat when I actually was allowed to fight enemies. Now of course I do think the combat does have some flaws, just like everything has flaws, so I'll just bring up the few that I think are significant enough to drag down the experience. The first issue I'll get into is the enemy variety, as this was something the developers actually praised about this game, and it feels completely unearned because guess what? They reused almost every enemy type from the first game. And I mean exact same animations and attacks. Oh my god, the game takes place in the same world as the last game. It's gonna have some of the same enemies. Okay, this is how I know this guy's a retard. You just argued that I don't know how video games work, and then you just made a meta argument for why in-universe the same enemies would appear. You're a moron. I'm just gonna say it. I don't care if I get in trouble for mocking you. You deserve to be mocked for a statement like this. Why didn't the old God of War games reuse every enemy type then? It was Greece. It would have the same enemies, right? Because it's fucking lazy. It makes the game feel like the last game. Have you never played a sequel in your life? This is the absolute state of gamers, dude. This is why I have no respect for anyone who buys and plays modern games and actually enjoys them. Maybe have this all new enemies. Don't reuse any. Like, literally don't reuse any enemies. I think that'd be a good idea. What's bad about reusing enemies? Oh, why is that a problem? I don't know, dude. How about you just stop sharing your shitty opinion? There's an idea. Same executions, too. And, oh, I could talk about the executions and how almost all of them are lacking any sort of gore. Because they're scared of gore. They're absolutely scared of gore. Modern gaming is so scared of gore. They've cut the gore. They've cut the gore. No gore. Gore doesn't exist in modern games. Last one! <laughs> No real gore from this rated M game. This is about as rated M as the Halo games are these days. Because they're scared of gore. They're absolutely scared of gore. Modern gaming is so scared of gore. Same executions, too. And, oh, I could talk about the executions and how almost all of them are lacking any sort of gore. Which, yes, the last game also did. It just seems like modern games in general are scared of gore for one reason or another. This game is rated M, so what's the fucking problem? <laughs> I would rather be as honest as humanly possible. It's pretty much the only policy I've stuck to. 
I don't know. I guess this is supposed to be satisfying, but it's really not. I don't know. Probably because there's no gore. If there was gore, this would be kind of cool, I guess. And to get back to the enemy variety, I feel like a lot of the new enemy types are just kind of lame. Like generic Viking raiders on Midgard, or the Asgard warriors, which are all zombies. The frog enemies that surprisingly show up in like three different realms. And a lot of the ones that aren't lame visually anyway, are actually very annoying to fight. Like the new light elf variant that's a samurai, or the Asgard warrior who has a bifrost pick and a hammer. These motherfuckers can attack at lightning speed and have unblockable moves or moves you have to parry and can dodge out of the middle of combos, shit like that that just makes them not very fun to engage with unless you're spamming runic attacks. And for my last major criticism of the combat, let's talk about hard mode somewhat briefly. As tempting as it is to talk about this in length because I unfortunately played about two thirds of the game on hard mode or give me no mercy. It's a waste of time because most people will never play it on hard, and trust me, it's a mistake. And not for the reason you're thinking. Most people would think, oh, the enemies just do too much damage, or they have too much health. Well, I didn't find out what the real problem was until about 15 to 20 hours in, because originally I did turn down the difficulty from hard to normal just a few hours into the game, but it turns out there's a bug where sometimes your difficulty change will not save even after the checkpoint restart. So I actually ended up playing the game on hard for about 8 more hours until I finally decided to check it again after dying really quickly to Neathog. Alright. Sometimes I wonder if like, the difficulty is bugged or something, like I never actually left hard mode. Let me just double check. Wait, what? Wait a minute, what? Wait a minute, guys. I've been on hard mode the whole time. Unfortunately, I let chat vote on whether or not I should stay on hard, so I still ended up playing on hard all the way up until that first Berserker fight. And after a few more combat encounters, I finally figured out what hard mode really does. It gives every enemy in the game super armor. Yes, even basic enemy types. So my original recording for this combat section was actually much more negative than this because I was very annoyed by the fact that every single enemy would either dodge out of the middle of your combo, or attack straight through the motherfucking God of War's axe swings to the chest. I just figured it was a normal gameplay mechanic that only heavy attacks and runic attacks would actually stun the enemy, because I don't think I've ever encountered a hard mode that introduces super armor. What a horrible fucking idea. That said, there was one upside to playing the game on hard and then later on normal. That being the realization that enemies have way too much health even on normal mode. What the hell were they thinking that every single enemy in the game takes at least six hits to kill from the motherfucking god of war? If you have an insane difficulty, then I'm gonna pick hard. I'm not gonna pick, you know, pussy ass normal. Now, Im imagine the amount of criticisms, quote unquote, that would open my channel to if I played games on Game Journalist difficulty. Playing on hard just removes one more thing that people can take away from my videos. Whatever. I guess I'll just, this will be yet another criticism of this 10 out of 10 game of the year game. Not that I didn't have plenty of criticisms for, uh, uh, for, uh, Elden Ring, which unfortunately is probably probably going to be game of the year. If you have an insane difficulty, then I'm going to pick hard. I'm not going to pick, you know, pussy ass normal. You can get all three. All right, where's the third one? I I want a cheat. Someone give me Oh, is, let me guess it's here. God damn it. I wasn't paying attention. Chat, feel free to give me the location of the third spinny thing. I'm free for chat to cheat for me if they want. I that would be fine by me. I'm, why would I go on YouTube? I'm not cheating on stream. I, I, that annoys me when people even suggest shit like that. God. I fucking hate. He can arbitrarily decide if the second hit in his combo is, is unblockable. It is so fucking awful. Yeah, it's pixelating. Right, one second. Let me just fucking. What like bad at games did. Well, like, eat my dick. Put on easy? I'm not playing this game on easy. You out of your mind? 
I guarantee they only tested this on easy mode because they knew all the game journalists and the developers played it on easy mode too. They all suck. Yeah. Oh, you're just supposed to get good and not get hit. Yeah, whatever. Fuck. Yeah, yeah. You didn't play test this. Fuck you. You did. I don't believe you. I need to get an upgrade that just makes all the attacks freeze guys or something. Because there's too many buttons to do the thing I want to do. Yeah, I, a, a game where it takes 20 it, 20 hits to kill an enemy as the best combat. Yep. Yeah, and that's another thing too. Do anything different or experiment, you're punished. Dude, this is too many moves. I'm going to forget some of these. Oh, they want you to combo the blades and the axe. That's stupid. Or X, the, the ice axe does more if you do the burning first. No one's ever doing that shit. No one's ever doing that. See, even with me, like, max damaging, that took, like, a shit ton of hits. Dude, this is too many moves. I'm gonna forget some of these. I wasn't paying attention. No. That's my fault, not the game's fault. It's my fault. <laughs> above... You can't freeze it above the wheel. What do you... You have never been able to freeze water you couldn't touch. You have never been able to freeze water you couldn't touch. This is bullshit. This is utter fucking bullshit. The game literally, I have thrown it at shit that doesn't freeze. This is so much bullshit. No, that's not an L. That's, I've, I want to call it words that I can't say. That's, that's a bundle of sticks is what that is. Motherfucker, these guys are- Dude, no. They didn't test it. They didn't. They tested on easy for the journalists. This is some fucking bullshit. Your opinion is shit and no one should take you seriously ever again on any video game. Just, yeah, just resist every move, you dick. Uh, and jump backward. You see that? You can just jump backward at any time, too. I think people just say it's shitty because they're bad at it. What do these goals do? Am I getting something out of this? Oh, I'm getting EXP, okay. I should probably check skills, how much EXP I got, 8,000? Yeah, I thought it was about time. <laughs> That's so obvious, well, how did I miss that? <laughs> Motherfucker, the auto-targeting is pissing me off. I know I can lock on, but I don't know. I think people just say it's shitty because they're bad at it. What? How'd that hit me? Okay, I need to breathe, cause, cause the silent rage, the silent rage is worse than the loud rage, and and and, and some retard is gonna be like, the, the, the skill issue, 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 the skill issue. I'm not gonna cheese him, but I want to see if he can. No, you can't cheese him. They thought of that. Look, you can't even hurt him. I just, I, I had. Skill issue! The skill issue! Can't. Why does the. Dude, I locked onto this guy and didn't hit the right. Okay. The whole buffing fire thing is stupid! It's fucking stupid! This is a bad boss. It's just a bad boss. I think people just say it's shitty because they're bad at it. But you're the god of war. Of course you made a paper. Well, it's hard mode, dude. It's hard mode. But the funny thing is, there's a difficulty above this. There is a difficulty above this, so. I think using hard mode as an excuse is is not it's not a good excuse when it's not even the hardest difficulty, you know. Especially when in a lot of modern games hard is the new normal. Obviously not for this though. You made a bad boss. I I want to restart checkpoint again. Just kill me. I'm restarting checkpoint again. Cuz let me get let me just pull out my notes. Let me pull out my notes. I'm going to write down all of the Let me just memorize. Okay, so let's get this straight. One, he could do a random unblockable as a second hit of a combo. Two, he can input read and cancel his three hit combo at any time. 
Uh, next point. Uh, he buffs himself, and if you hit him, he explodes for no reason. So you have to throw him with the ice axe at him. I wasn't paying attention. No. That's my fault, not the game's fault. It's my fault. I'm tanking the hits just to... To get his meter up. Okay, go. Get What? Oh, you don't get an attack? Oh my god, it's pointless. It's pointless. His stun meter is pointless. His stun meter is pointless. Okay, that's another one for the bullshit list. The stun meter doesn't work on this boss. It doesn't do a, a, a move. Are you fucking joking? Now, could this game be any shittier? It doesn't even follow its own rules. This game sucks. This game sucks. I literally... <laughs> All three of them hit me at the same... <laughs> this game sucks. This game sucks. This is normal difficulty. This is normal difficulty. This game sucks. The skill issue. The skill issue. <laughs> There we go. Whatever. Look how the long that took. Look how long that took. Too angry to good, die. good fucking we'll game design, motherfucker. God damn it. I didn't even get a directional indicator for that poison. Really? I wouldn't be surprised if they think, like, most gamers are extremely incompetent at games and need shit spoon-fed to them constantly. Oh, yeah, it's Fire Skeleton number four, guys. Let's see how many times this one takes me to kill. <laughs> I hate the mechanics of this game, I really do. Dude, this is too many moves. I'm gonna forget some of these. There's too many buttons to do the thing I want to do. Okay, I guess I can- I can level her up, I guess. Oh, she can go Valkyrie mode? Man, that actually might have helped me. <laughs> if I had upgraded her, that might have actually helped me a little. Oh, they want you to combo the blades and the axe. That's stupid. Or X. The, the ice axe does more if you do the burning first. No one's ever doing that shit. No one's ever doing that. See, even with me, like, max damaging, that took, like, a shit ton of hits. Dude, this is too many moves. I'm gonna forget some of these. I don't want to have to, like, change one of my main points of the video. Well, not change it, but just say, like, in the beginning of the game, enemies are too spongy, you know? Because now I'm doing proper damage. Man, that is really good. That is really good. I wasn't paying attention. No. That's my fault, not the game's fault. Oh my god. Now, every one of you saying I'm bad at the game has to take it back now. You have to take- you have to apologize. I want to see I'm sorry, synthetic man in the chat. I want to see it. That's not a DSP moment, that's the opposite, you du uh, dumbasses, I swear to god. <laughs> that is the opposite. You're saying I'm DSP for playing it on hard mode. Retards. Actual retards, you guys. Uh, my chat, I did I can't believe you guys are this dumb. I, I, there's dumb people in the chat, apparently. Why would I replay the game? What are you talking about? I'm not gonna give it a higher score anyway, I don't like the combat. Yeah, I know, but I feel like downgrading a criticism from the game- the enemies are spongy to hard mode is spongy is not nearly as much of a criticism against the game, you know? And I'm not gonna play it again on normal to find out if it's not spongy on normal, you know what I mean? <laughs> I swear to God, I have to hit him or he'll blow up. But if another guy hits me while I'm recalling my axe, I can't block. The, uh, the skill issue. 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 <laughs>
Oh my god! Don't blame the game for your lack of skill. You haven't even played the game. I love when people don't play the game to tell me not to play the game. That's the funny part. The skill issue! The skill issue! The skill issue! The skill issue! I'm never dropping down to easy BP Jordy. Play the game. Just play the fucking game. And every time you die, I want you to tell me. Tell me how many times you died. Record it. Write it down. But you'll lie, because your pathetic, weak ego won't allow it. Uh, I, I'm really just kind of mashing my way through this at this point. The game is pretty inconsistent. Like, these guys are dying pretty fast. Partly because I had my fire buff that, but... I don't know. Like, the, the combat works, it's just, there's a lot of buttons for us. I'm fucking up the buttons. Now again, once you have runic attacks and all these different weapon buffs and things, that isn't really the case anymore. In fact, by the end of the game, I was pretty much just swapping between my three weapons, spamming the light and heavy runic attacks, and everything was dead. So the combat was still fun. This is not me, like, counteracting my previous statements. I still think the combat is good. I just think the enemies have too much fucking health. I think in a full-blown RPG, which I wouldn't consider this one, it is an action game with light RPG mechanics, but a full-blown RPG like Dragon's Dogma, which I actually played a little bit of directly after I finished this game on stream. In the early game, enemies do feel like they have too much health because your attack is too low, but that's built into the game's systems, so that once you're level 50 and have better gear, you can kill all those pussy-ass enemies in one hit. There isn't really an equivalent in God of War. There's only one time during the game's story where they purposely throw enemies with less health at you to make you feel powerful, and that was one of my favorite encounters in the game. These stats attached to armor seem to have a very minor influence on your overall stats. Someone actually did testing for the original game and found this out, and it seems like they haven't changed anything. So the only things that matter are the passives, which range from incredibly situational to actually pretty damn good, and your overall gear level, which is by far the most important thing. Once again, it feels like this game was designed primarily for casual gamers, people who don't care about stats or numbers or min-maxing. If I had upgraded her, that might have actually helped me a little. Oh, they want you to combo the blades and the axe. That's stupid. Dude, this is too many moves. I'm gonna forget some of these. There's too many buttons to do the thing I want to do. You just equip the gear that has the highest number and move on. And the few people who do care, that gear is saved specifically for the end game. So it makes you question why the gear system even exists. Well, I feel like the obvious answer is the same answer that you could give for any modern game that has crafting or a million side quests or activities scattered throughout the map. The AAA industry all copy off of each other. They see what works for one company and they steal some of those concepts and add it to their game. They call it feature creep, right? And while personally I hate crafting, I actually usually like RPG mechanics. They're just too bare bones in these last two games. So now that we've talked about combat pretty thoroughly, it's time we talk about level design. This is not going to be a long section because the level design is very simple and exactly the same for every realm in the game. Stop me if you've heard this one before. It's a set of combat arenas connected with linear hallways. Everything that's in between a combat encounter is either a puzzle or a minor optional little side pathway that has a treasure chest at the end. I know a shit ton of you are going to have no problem with this whatsoever. You might not even notice that it's all a bunch of linear hallways. But I just want to remind you that back when Final Fantasy 13 came out, everyone called it Final Hallway 13. And the resemblance is truly uncanny. It's Michael. Yeah? It's Michael right. I'm safe. And serene here. I can't go right. Hey, Michael. Yeah? Try going left. I can't go left. Hey, Michael. Yeah? Try to play the game. We nearly took each other's heads off. But he's sorry. I thought I was playing the game, John. But I've been using the wrong controller the whole time. And now this has become increasingly common in any single player game that doesn't feature a sandbox. 
Now these last two God of War games have featured both, sort of, anyway. The mini sandboxes are just islands connected by a glorified loading screen. So it's not all that different, but at least it has the illusion of exploration, right? Which is much better than the hallways, I'm not shitting on it. If you see a treasure chest right across an invisible wall that you could just feasibly jump over, which of course you can't fucking jump in half of modern games either, which is just bizarre. Everything feels like a hallway in a circle and a hallway in a circle in this game, and there's only so many ways I can complain about that before it gets tiresome. Just know that I'm not asking for another sandbox or open world. I'm just asking for a little bit more player interactivity, a little bit more actual control over the game. Player choice, right? I know it's a bit of a meme term, but when you restrict my controls so heavily by putting invisible walls everywhere, it makes the game less fun every single time without exception. So we might as well talk about the puzzles too. I fucking hate the puzzles. Every single puzzle has the same exact solution. You look around the room, and you throw your axe or you throw your blades. That's it. The difficulty ranges from extremely easy and brain dead to weirdly difficult just because you miss something obvious or you forget how a mechanic works. People made fun of me multiple times on the streams because I forgot a simple mechanic like runic arrows can explode fire, which made a puzzle way more difficult than it was supposed to be. But the puzzles just feel completely pointless and like padding because they feel less like puzzles and more like a game of I Spy. Someone said shoot middle pillar, then the missing flame, then directly the blue flame. That doesn't work. I, that doesn't work. That doesn't work. We've we've done this already. We've d I you can't. It doesn't activate the flame. Look. What? <laughs> Here we go. I literally already did that. This game is pissing me off. It's pissing me off. It's pissing me off. That didn't work. You guys saw me shoot it like a, a few minutes ago. I literally did that already. I literally did that already. This is bullshit.
Game's bugged. Bu buggy puzzle well, mechanics have nothing to do with, with intelligence. On. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. There's almost no actual thinking involved. And look, I know in the original God of War games it wasn't that much different. Just replace I Spy with block puzzles and you have essentially the same thing, right? <laughs> Okay, so it doesn't stay. I actually don't know which way I'm supposed to be pointing this. I think I gotta turn it on first. Why not simply hold it in place? The angle looks right. You know, it'd be great if I could just ask Atreus to hold this for me. I think that'd be cool. I mean, I know he's weak and pathetic, but, you know. I like that. God damn it, I didn't want to do that. It's just barely off. I, that thing looks like it can get hit, but obviously it can't. Maybe if I throw a heavy throw, will knock it slightly. No. Two hundred IQ. <laughs> there, I, the game is about to call me a retard. I know it, and I, I'm gonna feel bad about it. I'm gonna be sad. I mean, th this has got to be it, but if I let go, it goes up. Oh, wait a minute. You know, maybe I'm supposed to let go and just time it. Fuck. Yeah, yeah, that's what you're supposed to do. Can I just do it from here? Or up there? No. Okay, yeah, you got to time it. Damn it. All right. There's almost no actual thinking involved, but there were way too many puzzles in this game. Yes, some were just optional Norn chests, but do you really think I'm going to ignore this loot right in front of me? No. The game is 25 hours long. Why the hell do you need this many puzzles, man? It makes no sense. And that's not even mentioning the backseat gaming from the NPCs. Every single one of the story mandatory puzzles, one of the characters will literally give you the solution if you take too long. Which doesn't sound so bad, right? Except, how long do you think is too long? Just take a guess. It's less than whatever you think it is. It's like one minute, dude. There have been several puzzles in the game where I was actively in the middle of solving it. And the character told me what to do. It pissed me off so goddamn much. Fire for something. Can you turn it somehow? Yeah, I can turn it, but I don't I haven't even figured out the puzzle yet, woman. Give me a second. 
Swing that torch to the other Shush. side and burn the Shush. I'm gonna kill you. 10 out of 10. <laughs> it babies you told you exactly what to do. <laughs> what the hell? Shut up. What are you doing? Oh my god. Uh, listen, I've had my retard moments during these last few streams. I'm not I won't pretend I didn't. What? Stop. 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 I'm putting this in the video. I'm putting this in the fucking video. This is a, no you can't defend this. You can't defend this. And do you want to know why the developers did this? You'll never believe it. It's because of Dark Side Phil, DSP. And if you don't know who it is, it's not worth explaining to you. But let's just say he's one of the worst gamers of all time. He is notoriously horrible at every video game he plays. Rated M. So what, you're telling me adult men are actually, like, fully actually retarded. Like, we're, we're talking unironically, your, your brain doesn't fucking work. Why not simply hold it in place? The angle looks right. There's almost no actual thinking involved. And they fucking designed their game around him, of all people. So now it's finally time to get to the story. As you can probably tell by how much is left of the video, I had a lot to say, and most of it is not positive. As hard as I tried up until this point to be as fair as I possibly could to this game, this is about where that stops. I fucking hated this story. I honestly struggled to think of anything I actually liked about it. And I mean anything. And there's a reason that non-Sony fans call these games movie games, because they really are fucking movies. 70% of this game is some type of cutscene. 70% is not spent actually playing the fucking game. I'm sad that you're still streaming this. Well, I have to play the whole game, so I figured, eh, I'll still stream it while... while I feel like streaming. I think at a certain point, I probably will stop, just because, uh... I mean, you guys... I'm gonna run out of rea- The only major reactions after a certain point are just gonna be to, uh... story moments. And those are gonna be few and far in between the exploration gameplay. 70% of this game is some type of cutscene. 70% is not spent actually playing the fucking game. Story moments, and those are gonna be few and far in between the exploration gameplay. Down to some of the quick time events not even being real quick time events, as in you cannot fail them. Okay, you don't want me to hit the prompt, right? Oh, no, you have infinite time, don't you? <laughs> yeah, oh my god. 10 out of 10, 11 out of 10, 12 out of 10. Every every game Sony makes is a fucking masterpiece. <laughs> yeah, good, good Sony. Good job. Normally, I would never spend over half a video talking about the story, but when over half the game is the story, I fear I have no choice. I know I've already said it a few times, so it really feels like the story is padding at this point. What does that mean? Like, I don't know what the fuck is even... I, I like, smell something. I don't know what our important. goal is Maybe going into Ragnarok. You know, like, what, what are we attempting to achieve before Ragnarok, you know? So, so, none of it's good. None of the story is good. So, here we go. The complete story breakdown of God of War Ragnarok. So, Ragnarok is a direct sequel to the last one, to no surprise, but there has been a time skip. I think it's an undefined amount of time, so I'll just assume it's four years. Atreus has hit puberty. And no, that's not a specific plot point, but it might as well be. It doesn't even matter, because despite literally being given a waifu, he doesn't show any sexual interest in her whatsoever. Yeah. She's a child, bro. They're the last two of the species, the dude, and it's ancient Norse- Okay, someone educate this blank slate. This is, these are ancient on, times on. that the fucking age of consent didn't exist. <laughs> It turns out in the time between games, Atreus and Kratos have literally just been hiding in their house, waiting for the world to end. 
I wish I was fucking joking. But yes, despite an apocalyptic winter coming to Midgard, the heroes do nothing. We prepare for a fight for which we are not ready. I just wish Atreus were not so... restless. I care only for your safety. My story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there, finding out who I am, who Loki is. I will not allow you to pick a fight with gods. I will not march my son to war. He is no Spartan. I would keep it that way. I can hide no longer. I do not want this war. We have suffered enough. Yes, despite an apocalyptic winter coming to Midgard, the heroes do nothing. Dude, Kratos literally fucking says it in the game! They're training for when the gods eventually find where they're hiding out and attack them. They're not doing nothing. Oh, they trained. Oh, so what are the results of their labor? If they were training so hard, wouldn't they start with more abilities than they had in the last game? They wouldn't start at level 1 with level 1 equipment, right? They wouldn't just stick with the same equipment and abilities if they were training so hard for three years, right? It turns out that Freya has been trying to kill Kratos for the last four years, but despite knowing exactly where he lives, she somehow has failed every time. Despite the game trying to tell us that Freya is totally a threat, guys, she's a super badass, she could probably even take Kratos. You know, I would have beaten you. What? Earlier, if Atreus hadn't been there. Hmm, perhaps. We could go again, find out for certain. I would rather not. I'll bet you wouldn't. Maybe you should try listening to the video before you make presumptuous comments like this. At no point did I say Freya should break into their front door and challenge Kratos directly, or kill him in his sleep, I guess. How does that make any sense? The point is, she could easily plan a better assassination than fly in bird form from above and try to get a surprise attack in, especially after likely three years of attempts. Freya is a super powerful mage and warrior, aka a Mary Sue, and that's the best she could do? Really? Now I understand why everybody makes three hour videos these days, because unless you explain every point you make in detail, someone will attempt a gotcha instead of applying any critical thinking. Why do you think Freya had only two options? And yeah, I don't think I need to expand on this comment any further, I think I put it pretty succinctly here. The problem isn't that she didn't show up at their front door to attack them, it's that she had no plan and didn't use her vast magical ability to assist her in some way. So the story really begins with Fenrir dying. You can consider this the first of many Ryan Johnson-esque subversion moments in this story. Because if you know anything about Ragnarok from actual Norse mythology, you know Fenrir is a big part of it. The game also tries really hard to tug at your heartstrings here, but we literally just met this wolf. We've never seen him before, so it doesn't work. Ah, Sony sucks so goddamn hard now. Yes, we will kill the dog in the beginning of the story to hook you. It's like, we, don't, we, we didn't even see the dog. And fucking soy boy weirdos don't even like dogs anyway. Literally, the first 20 minutes are one giant cutscene. You don't even really get to play the game unless you count engaging with a quick time event and moving the analog stick left or right as gameplay. Atreus runs off into the woods, Kratos chases him. Turns out he can now turn into animals. Yes, the biggest character development for Atreus is that he is now a furry. And so Kratos now determines that his son can't be trusted since he can't control his emotions or something. Remember this plot point for later. Then Odin and Thor finally show up, and honestly the game could have just started here. And this is the second major point of subversion, because despite God of War 2018 building up Odin and especially Thor as being like these badass super powerful guys, Odin looks like a frail old man and sounds like a snake oil salesman. You know who I am? Back before winter set in, there were some... Misunderstanding. 
regrettable ones. But I think we all have a better idea of who we're dealing with. Now, what you did to his boys. Self-defense. Odin is meant to look old and frail. He's not the MCU version. He's meant to be deceiving and manipulative. I don't even necessarily disagree with this. It's more just a wider statement about how the Norse gods are all kind of pathetic rednecks. That the game is trying to make a statement that even the gods are human. Look, they have human flaws, which makes them more relatable. Why do characters have to be relatable? Why do gods, of all things, have to be relatable? Isn't it more refreshing to have some divine supreme being that is hard to understand because they've always been better than everyone else? Kind of like how they wrote Heimdall, actually. Which is probably why he was my favorite character. Having the gods all be losers is just kind of depressing, I don't know. It feels deeply cynical even in a way that's hard for me to comprehend, but I don't think most people think about it that way. They just like the fact that the gods are human just like us. Well, I don't. Personally, I hate it. And some people have implied that he's supposed to be a Trump allegory, but I will give the developers the benefit of the doubt this time and just say he's supposed to be some generic fascist smooth talker, I guess. There's always a choice! Why are we talking to him? The plan was to kill him. They literally said this. In the story, the plan to was to kill him. You can choose to be better. Oh my god. No, Cringe. No, there's no choose to be better. I Fuck off. I have to know what happens next. I will never stop. Why did they make Odin's vocals similar to Trump? Um, I don't know. Another Why would they? Here. Weird. Odin used her. And she unwittingly paid the price. Classic Odin. She is a monster. Also, this Odin man bad shit is, is like reaching meme levels. Where it's like, the Odin that's talking to Atreus is like a nice old man dude who's acting like, you know, an uncle or a grandpa. And then the game constantly tells you how horrible he is. He really is like the Trump of this game. And some people have implied that he's supposed to be a Trump allegory, but I will give the developers the benefit of the doubt this time. Some people have implied... It sucks that I'm too honest. It really sucks that I'm too honest. Thor is a fat fuck alcoholic who has daddy issues. We don't learn most of that until later, but we might as well get it out of the way now. And God, I just fucking hate this design. Anyone who says he looks like a strong man has never actually seen a strong man. Even Eddie Hall at his fattest had more muscle definition than this. What the fuck are you talking about? There's a lot of strong men that look like Thor. Odin came to than this. What the Is this not, is he not retarded? You can't see the difference between these two pictures? You put that in your video! You put it in your fucking video! Oh, do those look like the same picture to you? This is like the meme. This is the, it's like the opposite of the meme, actually. Uh, this, this guy's retarded. This guy's actually blind and retarded. I, I can't, I can't fucking, I, I'm, I'm mad. I'm, look at his chest. Look at the arms. Yes, his arms are covered in there. But still, the point is, are you fucking in lots of strong man? And he literally just shows Eddie Hall, which was the fattest. Eddie Hall bulked up to like 430 pounds for that or something like that. And at 6'2", six, 6'2 two, six, two and a half, again, you don't know what you're talking about, but you pretend you do. The fucking Dunning-Kruger is pissing me off. The arrogance. People say I'm arrogant, but at least I know what I'm talking about. Like, holy shit, this is just embarrassing. This, again, same picture. Same picture. That definitely looks like the same thing. Oh my, but people who don't lift, people who don't lift will tell you this is, this is, I don't see the difference. It looks like the same guy. They just made the Nordic gods a bunch of, like, trailer park trash. They're all rednecks. Like, it, it, it makes no sense. I don't know, because white, white people bad or something, I don't know. Subvert your expectations. Directed by Ryan Johnson. Whatever, I'm wasting too much time on this. Basically, Odin came to offer peace. Kratos refuses, 
which might as well be a declaration of war. Just keep that in mind for later. And so you get your first huge boss battle with Thor, which actually was really fun. One of the most fun parts of the game for sure. Very similar to the first game where you fight Baldur in the beginning. And we also find out during that conversation that Atreus somehow was sneaking off during the in-between years, searching for Tyr in the other realms. And of course, Odin found out as he has spies everywhere. So Kratos eventually decides, okay, son, let's go look for Tyr. Which they put off for no reason, by the way. That was so obviously the setup of the previous game. Why do they keep trying to make Kratos the reluctant protagonist? And honestly, the truth is, he's not even really the real protagonist of this game. Atreus is. And you play as Atreus for roughly half the game. And his gameplay segments are the worst. They're completely fucking brain dead. It basically turns the game into a third-person shooter, where you just charge up elemental arrows, and then charge up normal arrows, and the game has such generous aim assist that you don't even feel like you're playing the fucking game. I purposely didn't talk about Atreus during the combat section because it would be purely negative. Even on hard mode, his segments were completely fucking brain dead. I think I only died one time and it's because I wasn't paying attention. Anyway, so rather anticlimactically, you find Tyr in Svartalfheim, the dwarf realm, and Ryan Johnson's subversion number three, the god of war, is a fucking pussy and he does absolutely nothing for the most of the story. Now obviously those of you who finished the game know why, and in retrospect it is slightly justified. Even considering the twist, this still comes across like the developers spitting in the face of the player because they spent so much time building up Tyr in the last game, that when we finally meet him he's fucking worthless. God killer. The giants are... were... Very private people. Odin dies. She lied. A male fit for a champion? I never thought I'd have the pleasure of seeing you again, Frigg. Uh, don't call me that. They stole Dropnir. What would drive you to such mischief? Is this Loki's doing? Enough! Heimdall's dead. I can't believe it. There's no stopping it now. Odin swore peace only so long as you spilled no more Aesir blood. I refuse that deal. Yet he honored it. I'm fine. I just hope unlocking this thing was worth the cost. You have it! What did it show you? I feel like th the whole tear being Odin the whole time thing, uh, they came up with, like, later. I, I don't think that was the original idea for the game. That's my theory. Because Cory Balrog didn't direct this one for whatever reason. I think. I think that was a change in direction. Then in the next section of the game, the characters don't really know what to do, and one of the major themes of the game reveals itself being that Kratos is an overprotective father, and despite being the god of war, he doesn't want war. Which actually doesn't make any sense given what we saw at the beginning of the game when Kratos refuses Odin's offering of peace. Seriously, somebody explain this. He doesn't want war, yet he refused peace. You can't have it both ways. At no point did I imply Kratos should trust Odin, that would make no sense. But you knew that. You knew I knew that. But it's easier to attack one of the weaker arguments of the video instead of defend against my more significant criticisms. That said, I will concede I didn't explain my point here very well, so I'll explain it better. If Kratos truly wanted to avoid bloodshed, he had only one choice. Accept the peace treaty. That doesn't mean he has to trust Odin, or let Freya die. 
Obviously, he would have to find a way to avoid Odin's ravens, but ideally, he would try to save Freya immediately after accepting the treaty, and she still wouldn't forgive him, but it would be a step in the right direction. Now, obviously, you would have to rewrite a lot of the plot to make this work, but you could probably still work in the tear twist so Odin would know of Kratos breaking the treaty. Then Odin would pretend to not know to get Atreus to complete the mask. It's not a perfect fix, but at least Kratos wouldn't be constantly moaning about not wanting war. I don't care enough to make a video rewriting the plot, but I'm sure someone on this platform will. So the point I'm trying to get at here is that I didn't actually care whether or not Kratos accepted the treaty. My point was, he's constantly bitching and moaning about not wanting war as the god of war. You know, one of the major points of Ryan Johnson-esque subversion in the story. And it just gets annoying and repetitive and tiresome after a while. And so he doesn't trust Atreus off on his own because, yeah, he's only a teenager. But Atreus sneaks off anyway to go try and make peace with Freya. And this whole plotline's fucking stupid. They killed her son. There's no fucking way Freya would ever team up with Kratos, but eventually they do convince her way later. But for now, of course she refuses and she almost kills Atreus and I was absolutely rooting for her at this part. Do it. Kill him. Do it. But no, she lets him go. And funny enough, I actually forgot what happened in the next couple hours of gameplay. I had to review my footage because I literally forgot why the crew then goes to Alfheim. It turns out it was to seek wisdom from Groa, the Keeper of Knowledge. And eventually, after fighting your way through the now light elf dominated landscape, and guess what? The light elves are bad too! Everyone's a bad guy in war, who would have thought? Are the developers trying to tell me that Ukraine aren't the universal good guys who are gonna save the world and defeat those evil fascists in Russia? I'm surprised that somebody hasn't tried to cancel Sony Santa Monica for this. Is there a right side in this war? I... I don't know. Oh, oh no, are you saying Ukraine might not be the good guys? Oh no, the developers can't be saying that, are they? Let's cancel them on Twitter, guys. Come on. I thought Ukraine was... They were always the good guys. They were fighting for the free world. It's only lights now. I guess. And light is also bad. The dark and the light are both Five bad, guys. Trace. Expectations Shall subverted. We? So then we fought our way through an army of dark elves to get to the light. You interfered in the elf war. Not by choice. We sought to fill our Bifrost, and they attacked us. And the dark elves were covering it with their sticky hive stuff. When we freed it, light elves came back. You seem better in Alpha. <laughs> Did they now? I see the elves continue their war. Yeah. So much for things being better in Alpha. We don't want to hurt you! We do not have a choice! We're the ones who freed the light! Why are you fighting us? We helped you last time! Atreus, focus! Most unfortunate. They attacked us! More will follow once we're inside. Is there truly no other way? Not like they're giving us much of a choice. So your father said. I'm just naive, I suppose. No. Just an optimist, old friend. This statue depicts the elves before the war, before they discovered the power of the light. Solid light. Yes, some things don't change. After the creation of the Nine Realms, fallen souls began to gather down in those waters. When the elves discovered its potential, they built this temple to harness that energy. A smashing success, to say the least. Many of them became addicted to their newfound power, and thus, the Light Elves were born. The temple looks so different than I remember. It was all broken and covered in hive stuff last time we were here. These Elves use Alfheim's light to protect the temple, and themselves by the look of it. So if these Elves use the light to build doors and make themselves stronger, what do the Dark Elves want with it? To return it back to its source. To them, the natural resources of Alfheim are sacred. None more so than the light itself. Aye, the light elf's success came at a terrible price. Alfheim's once lively desert withered into a storm-ridden wasteland soon after the creation of this temple. I get it now. Why they keep fighting? The dark elves want the souls and the light left alone. But the light elves want to keep using them. That's the long and short of it. Aye. So then, which side is right? 
Rarely is it so simple. And not our place to say. This is an elven conflict. I said as much the last time we were in Alfheim. Right. Here. The last time we were here, we killed the Dark Elf King. That's... unfortunate. I'd wondered what became of Svartli Offer. We had to defend ourselves. But when he died, he told us we helped the wrong side. I see. All this time, I thought the Dark Elf King... I thought all the Dark Elves were... Tyr? Yes? Did we help the wrong side? Hmm. Are you certain that's the right question? I... What's the right question? Is there a right side? Exactly. What do you think, Atreus? Is there a right side in this war? I... I don't know. Then perhaps you shouldn't pick one. And light is also bad. The dark and the light are both Five bad, guys. Expectations Shall subverted. We? Forgive me if I don't pay attention to the countless pointless dialogue. Quit talking over the game. Buh, 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 buh. You really want to hear all this shitty dialogue, dude? Blow the $70 yourself on the shitty game if you really care about the dialogue. Oh, I didn't like it before I played it. Yeah. That's the ultimate cope. In fact, actually, if you're asking to hear the dialogue, again, you're part of the problem. All this sucks. None of this matters. The light elves are bad, too. Everyone's a bad guy in war. Who would have thought? In fact, actually, if you're asking to hear the dialogue, again, you're part of the problem. Your opinion is shit, and no one should take you seriously ever again on any video game. I wasn't... Fuck, I wasn't paying attention. Who's Freya talking about? Chat, fill me in. Who's mad at us? N not that it matters. The next game is not going to be here. Either it'll be about Atreus or they're going to reboot it finally. I hope they... I hope they... You know, honestly, I hope they just let it die. Because Sony can't be trusted with the God of War. It requires no refreshment. You better the pause there. Yeah, let's just cut off that conversation. I remember that was the thing in the last one, too. I'm glad I got to cut him off. Enough talk for now. Be ready. I hope we never hear the rest of that story. Help Atreus. Is this meant to scare me? Well, you should know. It's working. Why is he talking? I'm upgrading. There's you don't need to talk. I'm I'm l fucking fuck you, dude. What is with this game? I I'm I'm doing something. You don't need to talk to engage me. Like what f I hate. I hate it. I hate it. Give me my janky PS1 bullshit any day over this. Spartalfime sounds unique. Spartalfime? Atreus. Alright. See you out there, Sindri. Yeah, it interrupt his stupid ass. Who that? cares? God, you know what? People can shit on item descriptions from Souls as much as they want, but at least it made engaging with the world optional. Hey, the game telling you what uh what the backstory is is way shittier. Than item descriptions. Dragon's Dogma 2 would be the best game ever if Naughty Dog's devs worked on it. With Japan's oversight? <laughs> I'm assuming you're joking, right? Have I really not been paying attention that much? I just love it was bad enough having Atreus and Mimir talking. Now I have Tyr talking too. Stop. Just stop talking. Just stop. Don't talk anymore. Knuckles is the only... Knuckles and Rouge are the only arguably black characters in Sonic. Designed by a trans person, by the way, so you can think of it as a fursona. An unofficial... Unofficial trans character. The Light Elves are bad, too. Everyone's a bad guy in war. Who would have thought? I wasn't paying attention. No. That's my fault, not the game's fault. It's my fault. After fighting your way to the end of the level, the gang discovers that the prophecy that Groa told Odin was a lie, and that Ragnarok would not be the end of all things, but only Asgard, specifically. And Atreus now believes that he will be the champion that leads all these armies. Kratos obviously does not like the idea of this, again, now that he's a cartoonishly overprotective father. And so the writers decided we don't have enough forced melodrama yet, so we get a kind of bizarre moment. But what if Loki going to Ironwood is the only way that- <gasps> Oh, Atreus. 
My son? I should be out there! Finding out who I am! Who Loki is! I will not allow you to pick a fight with gods. Someone that could give us answers about the giants and who Loki's supposed to be. Atreus! Wouldn't it help to understand what I'm becoming? Atreus! Until you learn control, we will take no unnecessary risks. There's something you should see. No! Just trust me, you'll want to. Trust! You have broken my trust. He knows Tyr could unite the realms against him. Plus, Tyr was the giant's greatest ally. So... Enough. Maybe they just need a couple of gods to come along and take the fight to him. Atreus, that is not why we are here. I was only joking. War is not a joke. Especially where gods are concerned. It seems, Atreus, you intend to recruit Tyr as an ally for war. I just... I'm trying to keep our options open. Maybe finding Tyr is our best protection. Seemed like Odin really didn't want us to find him. Once Tyr's free and can be God of War again, Odin won't have time to worry about us. If that is his war to fight, he may have it. Father, what if a war with Odin isn't just Tyr's to fight? What if it's ours too? War is not the only way. Okay, so, we came here looking for Tyr because we don't trust Odin, right? If you think about it, war could... Uh-oh. Sure hope Tyr's here. Atreus. We seek information. I know. Stop acting like I'm trying to start a war. Yet you do not say otherwise. Others? Maybe we can lay this to rest a bit, eh? I can't help but feel like you're angry with me or something. Ever since we got to Svartalfarn, you've been critical of my every move. If you don't think I can lead us, just say so. It is not your competence that is in question. Okay, but what does that mean? Consider your intent. I intend to help the God of War stop Odin. And that means freeing him from whatever prison he's in right now. Tyr? Well, I certainly don't think this is where Tyr currently is. He, he's gotta be here somewhere. This mine is huge. Atreus, what do you intend to stop Odin from doing? You speak as if you know his plan. I don't know his plan. That's why we're- Ahem, brothers. With Fimble Winter underway and Ragnarok around the corner, Odin will be desperate. Whatever he's planning to do surely won't be to the benefit of anyone but himself. Exactly. Okay, new exercise. Let's think about how Tyr's probably feeling locked up in his mind. If I were imprisoned by Odin and finally freed, Odin would obviously be at the top of my list. But I would just want to fight something. Anything. Even if it was just to know I still could. Atreus, another mental exercise. Would one who spends their life fighting, such as Tyr, have any desire to prove themselves? The proof leads to the wake of destruction. But if the wake of destruction is a bunch of bad guys, why does that matter? You're strong, and you did the right thing. War does not measure the strength of a man. I hope one day you understand. Why risk Odin's wrath to free me? Well... Ragnarok is coming. I hope you knew that. We thought you'd want to help. You freed me only to start a war? No! Um, we can beat Odin! We are not present in any of this. But that was Tyr leading the charge against Asgard. Plus, Hell's army was there. And the elves. Champion. Okay. Whoever that is, doesn't matter. Look. I just want to do the right thing. And according to prophecy... Speak no more of prophecy. War will not give you the purpose you seek, Atreus. Only slaughter. So what are we supposed to do? Roll over? Do nothing? Enough! If you want war, Atreus, see for yourself the legacy this one has left for the barons. But what if the giants are counting on me? What giants? Use the judgment of a man and not of a child. And so the writers decided we don't have enough forced melodrama yet, so we get a kind of bizarre moment. But what if Loki going to Ironwood is the only way that- Oh, Atreus. In fact, actually, if you're asking to hear Atreus the dialogue, again, you're part of the problem. All this sucks. None of this matters.
I don't know, dude. How about you just stop sharing your shitty opinion? There's an idea. Am I the only one who thinks Sindri is like a groomer or a pedophile or something? Every single time Atreus is by himself, Sindri is also there as like a creepy, tiny old man, encouraging all the strange whims that Atreus has against his father. Kind of reminds me of certain Discord communities. I just need to look out for the people I care about. It keeps bad things from happening to them. There's like a pedo working for Sony who's like, Sindri should be with Atreus in every and, scene. And champion and iron <laughs> yeah, I see. So why are they? I sincerely hope I never have to do it again. If that's what you're asking. <sighs> they are pushing the gay vibes. They really are. Well, if you'll follow me, Brock mentioned he needed somewhere safe to spend the night, and I believe someone make a gay joke. Can help you out with that. I missed the opportunity. I don't know, Sindri just sounds like a bundle of sticks. I wonder if Sony was allowed to be full woke, like these devs, if they would make them, like, lovers or some shit. I just... Sindri, they made even gayer, I feel like, than he was before. So I'm just, I'm getting that vibe. Disturbing, like, pedo vibes. Alright, time to continue the giant race. Let's go. We're skipping dates. Not even gonna kiss. Let's just go for it. I'm in. Yeah. She's a child, bro. They're the last two of the species, dude. And it's ancient Norse. Okay. Someone educate this. Blank slate. This is, these are ancient times that the fucking age of consent didn't exist. Disturbing, like, pedo vibes. And so now Atreus starts thinking of Ironwood, which earlier Jormungandr told him about. And he is transported into a magical pocket dimension. First, he starts seeing visions of the worst moment from the last game, where as a small child, he kills Thor's son in cold blood. It still pisses me off to this day that Kratos didn't beat his son immediately after that. I could probably make a video just about the emasculation of Kratos in this game, but... But we'll get into that more later. So now that he's been shown the worst parts of himself, he wakes up inside of Ironwood, this magical forest being protected by giant magic, and he meets our token black character for this game. Angraboda is a completely fucking pointless character. She does nothing of relevance in the plot except give Loki a bag of marbles. Time to go. Go where exactly? Giant stuff. Okay, follow me quickly. She does nothing of relevance in the plot except give Loki a bag of marbles. I realize most gamers are midwits these days, Rip. Well, most people are midwits. You cannot tell me with a straight face that this character wasn't added just for the sake of diversity. You know it was. Why, of all cultures, of all mythologies, would Northern Europe, possibly the whitest place on Earth, have black characters. Yeah. I'm sure this... What was even, is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. This game is a massive disappointment to Nor Norse mythology. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. The apple core. Must have taken ages to build. It's not very Norse sounding. If I had known how much they would already butcher Norse mythology leading up to this, it really doesn't even matter that she's black at this point. It's like, they don't even give a fuck. They're already spitting in the face of anyone who cares about Norse mythology. Already dead. Wait a minute, is there no Valhalla? If they're already dead, why are they in Asgard and not Valhalla? Is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. Well, you know, if I was a conspiracy theorist, I would say they're purposely subverting a... Let's just say, indisputably white culture, right? They're they're purposely subverting uh, white culture. I, I you know maybe I shouldn't continue this thought process, considering I suspect I'm being suppressed in the algorithm. But you know, is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. When am I going to Scandinavia to study Norse mythology and Viking history? Never. It sucks that I'm too honest. It really sucks that I'm too honest. Well, it doesn't matter because I'm a bigot for asking. I'm a racist for even noticing in the first place. And I couldn't even tell you the real answer if I wanted to because I'd be banned from YouTube. And it doesn't help that all of her dialogue sounds like modern dialect. It's usually not so lively around here. 
Guess I'm just lucky. Uh, you're just lucky. It's like if a Redditor was transported back to ancient Scandinavia. And Angraboda is not the only character that speaks in Newspeak. Mimir does it a lot as well, and it is incredibly distracting. See? Hati's got nothing to chase. And they say celestial theft is a victimless crime. Not totally sure who this What? Is. That combined with all the quips completely removes any tension from any scene in the game. Characters cannot shut the fuck up. I love- it's still in the way. Stop telling me what the fuck to do! Room. She's literally getting me killed. And it doesn't help that this is the worst part of the game by far. It's two straight fucking hours of not just Atreus' brain dead gameplay, but walking in a straight line, listening to a worthless character talk about things that don't matter, and worst of all, it ends with you fighting Angraboda's giant grandma who is stealing the souls of the animals in the forest because life is pointless? This shit comes out of fucking nowhere, and it only exists to give Angraboda a purpose in the story. She does nothing of relevance in the plot except give Loki a bag of marbles. And it only exists to give Angraboda a purpose in the story. I'm confused. And anybody telling you this game is fucking mature, just take one look at this boss battle and tell me with a straight face that this game is fucking mature. This is some baby game shit. This is Kingdom Hearts level. Ooh, the giant voodoo black woman throws magic out of her pot at you and you've got to shoot the symbol to stop her. And there's nothing about this that is God of War. You don't kill her at the end. You don't even like maim her in some way. No, there's just some weird message about how Angraboda will always be in Atreus's shadow, just a minor character in his story. Kinda based? This is simultaneously both hilarious and extremely cringe. If you didn't cringe at this, you are woke beyond any recovery. There is no hope for you. This is awful and you know it and you just can't admit it because you don't want to be called racist. It's that simple. While I do think Angraboda's grandmother was a little strange, I'm pretty sure Angraboda explains the reasoning behind it. She's taking the souls for the experiences of the animals, which I think they implied she grew addicted to. I notice you're completely brushing over the woke cringe factor here, which was, once again, obviously my point of the video. So you pretty much proved me correct. I knew not a single leftist would touch this shit with a 10-foot pole at the fear of coming across as a racist, so I accept your concession. You don't. What a tonal whiplash after that emotional scene. It's like we're not allowed to feel sad for more than two seconds. It's fine. This was a long time coming. We'll be back once we reach the other side of this path. Well then, that's two out of three. Atreus. Race me. Come on. I see what you're doing. You know you want a rematch after and last time. I appreciate. Um, last time, I beat you. I'm pretty sure it was a tie. Pretty sure it wasn't. So prove me wrong. One, two, three, go! Fine. You coming or what? Go, go, go! Fox? Oh no, you don't! Watch the turn here! I feel like the reviewer missed so many things, some of which was painfully obvious. The point of the wolf race was to cheer Angraboda up after the sad encounter after with her grandmother. Atreus literally states that. At no point did I imply I didn't know this was the case. That's pretty obvious. It's that simple. <laughs> no, you don't. What a tonal whiplash after that emotional scene. 
This doesn't change the fact that it is a tonal whiplash after what is supposed to be a very sad scene. The statement I made during the stream is perfect. I wouldn't change anything about it. What a tonal whiplash after that emotional scene. It's like we're not allowed to feel sad for more than two seconds. So really, the purpose of the scene doesn't matter. It's still bad. I'm still right. So I don't even know why you wrote this. Okay, are we done with this? Because I'm going to end the stream. Uh, if, if the, like, hopefully, if the segment's about to end, I'll play to the end of the segment. But I, I'm going to end the stream. <laughs> the synthetic hit, man. <laughs> <laughs> Nick's fed 62 bucks. Do they have EBT and S Asgard or wherever this is? This is uh, Jotun Jotunheim, right? What a tonal whiplash after that emotional scene. Then this horrific section of the game ends with Angraboda making Atreus promise her that he would tell nobody about this place, not even his father. What purpose does this serve to the story? Nothing but more emotional conflict. You can't tell anyone about Ironwood, not even your father. The biggest thing keeping this place safe is that Odin's not looking for it. My wards can keep the wildlife at bay, but if Asgard ever came looking- I get it. I'm sorry. I won't tell anyone. What would have happened if Kratos was told about Ironwood? Nothing. In fact, it would be a net positive for the story, because then we wouldn't get more fucking waste of time, shitty, emotional bait cutscene bullshit. Angraboda may not want Atreus to tell anyone because Odin has a large amount of power everywhere else. You're constantly tracking down his crows, and the twist further solidifies how much he knew. Any mention of it to anyone bore risk. Okay, but why doesn't Atreus just tell Kratos in private when it's only them in the room in Sindri's place? You can't tell anyone about Ironwood. Not even your father. As far as we know, Odin's ravens can't see through walls, and if Tyr, aka Odin, was listening through the door, you don't think anyone else in the house would have noticed? And again, you're brushing over the actual point that it exists to create more emotional drama between father and son. That was clearly the writer's intent, but again, you're ignoring that. So Atreus wakes up inside his house on Midgard instead of back at Sindri's place, but Kratos quickly finds him and confronts him where he's been. Atreus dodges the question and implies that Kratos needs protecting, not him. Are they completely retconning the end of the first game? We already saw the prophecy where Kratos dies during Ragnarok. That was literally the last thing that happened at the end of the first game. Well, suddenly a Valkyrie shows up, and it's a pretty good boss battle, but it turns out it was Freya, as Freya is the real queen of the Valkyries, not Sigrun. It wasn't enough that she's a super powerful mage who could revive a massive giant. No, she's also a combat expert. Countless winters we serve the old father, but only through his union to the queen did we ever taste some measure of freedom. But aren't you the queen? There has only been one queen of the Valkyries, the goddess Freya. When Odin severed her wings, I served in her absence, but it wasn't enough for the Allfather. He used an archaic piece of magic, corrupting my sisters. I tried to contain the damage by imprisoning them in places where they could cause no harm, but soon I lost myself as well. Freya is the real queen of the Valkyries, not Sigrun. It wasn't enough that she's a super powerful mage who could revive a massive giant. No, she's also a combat expert on par with Kratos as she nearly kills him, despite the fact we win the boss battle, we effectively lose. Kratos nearly gets killed by Odin's crackhead ex-wife. You can't make this shit up. Fuck this feminist bullshit, dude. I'm so tired of this. What was even- is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. Everyone complained about that purple hair chick from The Last Jedi, yet I haven't heard a fucking peep about Freya, and it's just as bad. Actually, in some ways, it's kind of worse, because she's way more present in the story from this point forward. What was even- is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. I don't know, dude. How about you just stop sharing your shitty opinion? There's an idea. 
Freya did not just randomly become a Valkyrie, she's always been a Valkyrie. While this is actually correct, the fact that anyone remembers this from four years ago is deeply depressing to me. I know autists will obsess over anything and remember every last minor detail, but yeah, this one was so minor and so out of nowhere and just didn't fit at all that I just blocked it from my brain, I guess. And once again, it doesn't change my point, which was Freya is a Mary Sue. Not only is she a super powerful mage, but she's also a super powerful warrior who can take on Kratos. Kratos is the best at everything ever. Stop ruining my Gary Stu power fantasy, you, you liberal fucks. And on top of that, the story is constantly telling us how horrible Kratos was in his past, and how all the things he did was wrong, but everything Freya has done and does in this game is right. Freya of the Valley. Master of Magics. Queen of the Valkyries. Witch of the Woods. Freya of Asgard. Destroyer of all she would hope to protect. <laughs> she always finds somebody to blame. She cannot change. Nobody harms my boy! But me! Oh! And on top of that, the story is constantly telling us how horrible Kratos was in his past, and how all the things he did was wrong, but everything Freya has done and does in this game is right. Your opinion is shit and no one should take you seriously ever again on any video game. But instead of killing Kratos, she decides to set a temporary truce as the two work together to break the curse that prevents her from traveling between the realms. So you travel to Vanaheim, which is like the jungle realm, I guess. And there you meet the Diversity Squad Avengers. And none of them, except Freya's brother, get any kind of development whatsoever. I really have no idea why they even exist. Maybe they're the writer's self-insert characters? But it was certainly distracting. I don't understand why they bothered to model like this dude's Avenger Squad when they don't really do anything, you know? Diversity squad. Look at this diversity oh, squad here. Do as you wish. We well, got a dwarf, mind. a I human. A I'm assuming. Fair. I don't know. I, I guess he's human. Who fucking secret. knows? And then we got I elves. I will not compromise. Diversity it. squad. No, Your opinion is shit, and no one should take you seriously ever again on any video game. Another major issue with this level is that throughout the entire thing, Kratos tries to convince Freya that he's not her enemy, and he's sorry for what he did, and she needs to move on, and he also tells her about his own family that he was tricked into killing. I've already explained how this would never happen, and it's pretty clear that the only reason it does happen is because the writers didn't want Kratos to kill their strong female character. But what makes it worse is that throughout the entire thing, Kratos is constantly apologizing and capitulating to everything Frey is saying, and he admits he basically wouldn't even defend himself against her if she tried to kill him again, because he couldn't bear to kill his friend. Why'd you refuse to fight me? Every outcome would mean defeat. What does that mean? I have never wished you harm, Freya. You helped us. You saved Atreus when he was sick. I did not wish to live with killing you any more than I wished to die. I see. How the fuck is this Kratos, dude? This is such character assassination. You can't convince me for even a second. This is the same person that was in the original games. Does anyone remember the time that Kratos crushed a woman under a fucking lever to hold a door open? A completely innocent woman. Honestly, just making Kratos a mature, wise old man was a horrible idea in the first place. There's no way they could ever pull it off in a realistic way. So anyway, you fight your way through, you make your way to the World Tree Roots, and Neathhog, the guardian of 
Yggdrasil shows up and you just straight up kill her. Are there any lasting consequences of killing the guardian of the world tree? To even think something could keep her away from her babies. Terrible, just terrible. It has come to my attention that Neethog has been slain. And as a result, her offspring have been let loose into the Nine Realms. What of it? Unfortunately, without a proper role model to supervise them, the little rascals are certain to fall to mischief. In time, said mischief could culminate in nothing less than their devouring of the Nine Realms entirely. Are there any lasting consequences of killing the Guardian of the World Tree? Of course not, and I'm not gonna count a side quest where you have to find her children. Because it's completely optional. Now Freya is free to wander the realms in her human form, and we get a scene straight out of a soap opera when she reunites with her brother. It's pushing the, the message. The family set me on fire. How did you expect me to react? Like my brother. Like the boy that used to have my back no matter what. And who I always supported no matter how selfish his choices. I expected you to come to find me. That no matter how hurt or angry, you wouldn't abandon me. Freya, please. I hate every character. If it was possible to hate every character, I think I hate every character. God damn, I'm getting sick of this shit. All right, I'm gonna try and wrap this up as quickly as possible. Once they return to Sindri's place, Kratos finally confronts his son in another infuriating scene. The truth is you're being a complete asshole. Laddie, you know that's no way to change a man's mind. He doesn't have any faith in me. It's fine if he keeps Just secrets. slap your it's son. Fine if Fucking it's slap fine. him. Her secret's hard to be stuck with this guy. Oh, okay. The pussy you know, ass writers. Like, like do you know how about. many dads would fucking bitch slap not. their sons if they spoke Wonder to them right there? That. No. I want Kratos to be the father who's always disappointed in his son. I would love that. That'd be awesome. Yeah, I don't give a shit about Atreus, though. I want him to die. Come on, beat your son. That I want to see it. I want to see the cutscene where, where Kratos beats his son. It's never going to happen. Kratos should have beat his Do ass. I, I was, I'm was. i still annoyed with that. We had another moment where he should have beat his son. I love that's the biggest ah. contribution to the sequel, is playing as a shitty son who's next. inferior to his dad in every way. It's a generic, uh, you know, teenage boy story, except he doesn't get punished at all. Looking for tears. This isn't what I wanted. This wasn't what I meant. Not if it meant losing Brock. We know Atreus. We know. So then, Atreus, being a spoiled brat teenage boy, does exactly what his dad doesn't want him to do and goes to see Odin. But first, we need to climb this massive wall to get inside. Well, it's just another generic linear section with no hard battles whatsoever. Very lame compared to traversing through Pandora's temple in God of War 1, just to name one example of the many cool things Kratos did. And once he makes it to the top, we finally meet Heimdall, probably the only based character in the game. Think you could pull me up, or... <sighs> no, I don't think I will. I am profoundly unimpressed. Well, I suppose I should expect nothing less from half breeds. Don't call me a half breed. And what are you going to do exactly? <laughs> well, uh, you toddlers are boring. Oh, no, no, no. You are going to spare me. Out of pity! You do not get to decide my fate! What an absolute Sigma male. And once again, our expectations are subverted, as Asgard is just a generic Viking village straight out of Skyrim. Honestly, I wasn't even surprised anymore at this point. Is that Odin's palace? Palace. 
Do you think the All-Father needs to puff himself up like some mortal chieftain? I guess not. That is the Great Lodge, which the All-Father built with his own hands. I'm sorry if that is a letdown for you. Real power, you see, does not need to flaunt. It emerges when the time is right. Don't you agree? Asgard is just a generic Viking village straight out of Skyrim. Honestly, I wasn't even surprised anymore at this point. What do you mean? This looks beautiful. And it looks like a what? place that these two people would come from. Yeah, did he really just say that? Did he really just say that? And it cut out my point where I compared it to Mount Olympus. Well, we'll see. Maybe inserts it right after this. I don't see what's wrong with this. But yeah, that's pretty much... Oh. Oh, God. So you just have shit taste, then. You're soulless. A soulless golem for the masses. Uh, and he, I guess what? He didn't address Freya being a Mary Sue. Very anti-woke, guys. But just compare Mount Olympus to this shit. After Heimdall makes a mockery of Atreus in an unwinnable boss fight, Odin takes Atreus under his tutelage anyway, and gives him a quest to find all the pieces of this mask that will allow him to see into this realm tear that somehow might have all the secrets to the universe or something. Guess what? We never get to see what's in it. Even more pointless subversion, all this does is blue ball the player. I mean, really? You set up this huge thing that the villain's trying to accomplish, and we don't even know if it's actually important or not. And during this entire segment, Atreus is emasculated by multiple characters, not just Thor, who's obviously much bigger and stronger, but Thor's daughter Thrude also is bigger and stronger than him. And Sif, even though she does literally nothing, is also much bigger than him, so Atreus just looks small and weak. Sif is also much bigger than him, so Atreus just looks small and weak. I'm the only sane man in this mad world. And I think they were trying to go for sort of a Peter Parker underdog type of thing, but I just don't like Atreus at all, and this made him feel even more pathetic. So as Atreus and Thor team up to find one of the mask pieces, Atreus slips away and finds Angraboda again, and they watch a prophecy which tells them of Surtur and his waifu, who are both giants, and they combine to become Ragnarok, which is pretty obvious foreshadowing for later. Shortly afterward, Thor and Atreus find the mask, and we're back to playing as Kratos again, and he finally takes agency in the plot, the only time this entire game that he makes a decision for himself. Atreus! I'm just checking on- To bed! Yes, sir. So what do you say? No. Let me show you what I found. Show me. Trey is where I'm planning our next move. Oh, so where are we going? Alfheim, home of the elves. The shrine of Groa, young one. Your father tells me you found it there. You don't get to make that choice, not with the debt you owe me. I am not here for debts. I would always have helped you. Did the Norns tell you how to get Atreus back? Do we have a plan? The Norns say Atreus will be killed by Heimdall. The plan is to kill Heimdall first. Oh, wow. Okay, Heimdall. Let's see. Never loses. Sees everything coming. Unpopular at parties. This won't be easy. Whatever his advantages, I will overwhelm him with my own. That's the idea. You gotta overpopulate his senses, see? And I got just the thing in mind to help you do it. Prophecy will not dictate our actions. Yeah. Our allies need help. That is our focus now. Let it go, you may live. We'll need to find Sata. Radatoskar was able to procure this. The three of us will go. I know just where to look. Mm. Splendid. I will be your general. It will be an honor to fight alongside you, general. Get those people to safety wherever you can find it. We will see if done. Frey and I will do what we can to slow Ragnarok. He was not mindless before. See if he will listen to reason. <laughs> Odin, 
will not get away. If he does, so help me. I know. Don't you know what I've done? Yes! But what will you do now? We don't change. We will destroy us. No more. No more. There is much to do. Much to rebuild. you join me and we're back to playing as Kratos again and he finally takes agency in the plot the only time this entire game that he makes a decision for himself I I know at a certain point it does seem like I'm I'm fishing for something to complain about to go seek out the Norns who are the fates of the Norse dimension after fighting your way through quite a lot of enemies on Midgard Kratos and Freya ride on a Kelpie to the bottom of some lake and find the Norns who are also very cringe characters. The ghost of Sparta furrows his brow menacingly. He resists the urge to grunt. Oh, he fails. And they tell us that fate is not real. People do have free choice, they just very rarely make a decision that they can't predict. This might be the only metaphor in this story that I actually agree with. Went to see the Fates, which was kind of lame. The Fates really didn't say anything of value. It, it was just another subversion of expectations. I'll probably add it to the video. This quest was not for nothing, as Kratos does learn that Heimdall plans to kill his son. The Fates really didn't say anything of value. Who cares? Nobody cares about good writing anymore. Nobody. And so, to kill Heimdall, he's going to have to forge a new weapon in Svartalfheim. An infinitely duplicating spear. And even though I think the weapon's awesome... This weapon sucks! The new cool weapon sucks. They didn't test their game. I think the weapon's awesome. The actual quest to get it was incredibly lame. This felt like padding once again. You don't even fight a cool boss in Svartalfheim. All you do is make your way to some lake, give the mermaid the ring, and she makes the weapon. That's literally it. Yet another missed opportunity from this game to do something really cool. For all the parallels to Marvel movies that you're about to see in a second, I'm surprised they didn't just rip off of Infinity War here and make something over the top. Then Kratos and Odin have a verbal confrontation. Once again, the old Kratos would never talk to Zeus. He would just try and kill him as soon as he saw him. He's doing well, by the way, and will continue to do so just as long as I return to Asgard. See, the real Kratos would have grabbed him by the fucking throat and beaten the just beaten Odin to death. He would not have fucking taken that sitting down. But, you know, he's, he's a mature old man now. Now let's get to a comment that I agree with in spirit, but it really wasn't my point in the video. At 44 minutes and 30 seconds, I said this. And yet more evidence that the writers emasculated Kratos, he never tries to kill Odin here. Even if it wasn't out of rage, which it would be, if he killed Odin, the plot would be over and he would win. I'm not saying he should win here, but he should at least try to kill Odin. He shouldn't just fucking stand there and get roasted and say nothing in return. Come the fuck on. And so this commenter said, I mean, Atreus was still in Asgard, so if Kratos tries to kill Odin in this scene, then Atreus would likely be killed by the gods in Asgard. Yes, absolutely, I agree. But that doesn't mean that the writers had to handle it this way. The problem is, a lot of these comments are treating it as if this game's story was written in stone, it could never be changed, or they don't want to address how it was written at all. And so instead of addressing my criticisms of the writers themselves, these comments just say, well, that's what happens in the story. Didn't you see what happened in the story? Yes, 
and I disagree with it. I think it's horrible. That's my point. Then Kratos and Odin have a verbal confrontation. Once again, the old Kratos would never talk to Zeus. He would just try and kill him as soon as he saw him. See, the real Kratos would have grabbed him by the fucking throat and beaten the- just beaten Odin to death. He would not have fucking taken that sitting down. It's just everyone is a fucking liar, I guess. Wouldn't it be way more interesting if Odin actually pissed Kratos off and he made a mistake? I think so, instead of just watching another slow-paced, pointless cutscene that we learn nothing of value from, and it just wastes our time, like most of this game. So yes, while I agree with you in spirit, the problem is the situation itself. This is just another scene that exists just to make us hate Odin more, even though there was already a shit ton of those. And it once again further assassinates Kratos' character, or I mean, uh, character development. <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. How can you even call it character development if it happens off-screen in between God of War 3 and 4? I mean, just imagine if we actually did get a boss battle here, and Odin was too strong for Kratos. And just makes a mockery of him, just wipes the floor with him. And then just laughs it off and goes back to Asgard and continues using his son. Wouldn't that be way more interesting than what actually happened? Yes, it would be. No. Your mother was far better at fishing than I. Bullshit. Kratos is the best at everything ever. Stop ruining my Gary Stu power fantasy, you... You liberal fucks! I mean, just imagine if we actually did get a boss battle here, and Odin was too strong for Kratos. Bullshit. Kratos is the best at everything ever. He does not respond to or attack Odin because that is clearly what Odin wants. That's why he's subtly taunting and insulting him. Again, no shit! Do you really think I didn't understand that? That doesn't matter. Sometimes doing what the villain wants and giving in is interesting. Kratos is known to be quick to anger, at least he used to be. He used to lash out at everything that pissed him off. That was one of his defining traits. This doesn't make him look more mature, it just makes him look like a pussy. That was my point. And again, the scene just could have ended far more interestingly than it did. Honestly, it would be even more interesting if Kratos did kill Odin, and his son did get killed as a consequence. And then Kratos has to grieve Atreus, and come to realize that he is trapped in a cycle of vengeance. In fact, there is a line in the game already that basically says this. Justice is not what we seek. It is vengeance. Every path I walk leads back to vengeance. But you guys don't want interesting writing. You want your Marvel cape shit, generic baby subversion that has no real consequences instead of actually interesting dramatic moments in the story. You'd rather have characters talk about their emotions ten more fucking times. And the sad part is, this is probably the most reasonable criticism I got, at least of the story. Because even though I made several other factual inaccuracies in the video, the people who wrote these comments made a lot of bad faith arguments and suggestions around my intent or implications of those points in the video. I didn't explain all my points in the video all that well, and there is a reason for that. The way I make video game reviews is different from most other people. There are generally two types on YouTube. There are the mainstream reviewers that give very vague praises and criticisms toward the game. They're typically the ones that get review codes and then release their videos as soon as the embargo is up to maximize views. I'm sure all of you can picture at least one person on this platform that's like this. And then there's the other end of the spectrum, the Joseph Andersons, or Matthew Matosis, or maybe H. Bomber guy, or something. Who will spend a month working on a video, writing the script, making sure it's airtight, having all their points organized and together. And these videos are usually over two hours long. Now I am somewhere in the middle. My videos are much longer than the vague mainstream reviewers, but they're also shorter and far less organized than the video essay YouTubers, right? Because the way I make videos is I just give you my unfiltered thoughts. 
Now, unfortunately, this will lead to a lot of factual inaccuracies, and it has over the course of the nearly three years I've made content. Because I don't really care to do research, I do most things based on notes and my own memory. Forgive me if I don't pay attention to the countless pointless dialogue. Quit talking over the game. Uh, buh, buh, buh. You really want to hear all this shitty dialogue, dude? Blow the $70 yourself on the shitty game if you really care about the dialogue. In fact, actually, if you're asking to hear the dialogue, again, you're part of the problem. All this sucks. None of this matters. I don't really care to do research. Is she even the god of? I've already forgotten. I corrected some of the mistakes I made in the video itself. And I'm not saying this to say that you can't point out factual inaccuracies. You certainly can. Just know I'm never going to change how I make my content because I don't care enough about YouTube videos to write this massive airtight script for something people are going to forget in a week anyway. Because that's the fact most content creators don't want to accept, is that YouTube content is extremely disposable. And that's how I've always treated it. I give my opinion and I move on to the next thing. Genuinely enjoy your stuff, man. Keep being real. You're the rare exception in the ocean of mediocrity. Well, thanks. It does mean a lot. I, I try. Just know I'm never going to change how I make my content because I don't care enough. YouTube content is extremely disposable. Being the one real gaming critic, just it's not good, guys. It's not hey, good. Why can't we just Everyone's fly over these guys straight to the mat? You think I want to carry you all? Unfortunately, I have standards for myself now, and I can't really make rambly shit anymore without feeling bad about it. Just know I'm never going to change how I make my content. And this scene was just painful to watch. I feel like the game can't decide whether or not Kratos wants war. He refused peace at the beginning of the game, yet we're constantly told he wants to avoid bloodshed, doesn't want to kill anybody except Odin, which is pretty much impossible. That's just stupid and naive to believe that would even happen. Not to mention, Odin straight up calls him a cuck in this scene, dude. That boy of ours is everything I expected. So clever, kind, be sure he's yours. And the writers obviously didn't play the old games. I know they did their research on some of these stories, or a different writer entirely wrote the stories while you're riding on the sled or in the boats that reference the previous games, but they clearly forgot that in God of War 2, Kratos did have worshippers. Spartans worshipped him while he was a god, and yet he says nothing here, acting like Odin was correct. What do you even know of godhood? In your lifetimes, has anyone ever worshipped you? And yet more evidence that the writers emasculated Kratos, he never tries to kill Odin here. Even if it wasn't out of rage, which it would be, if he killed Odin, the plot would be over and he would win. One could say you're on the verge of returning to form. Does it scare you, aiding another violent god? I'm scared for you, brother. That spear could start a war, THE war. If that no longer concerns you, then maybe Freya's right. Maybe the Giants had you in mind all along. I'm not saying he should win here, but he should at least try to kill Odin. He shouldn't just fucking stand there and get roasted and say nothing in return. Come the fuck on. And then when he returns to Sindri's place again, he cries. Yes, Kratos pretty much cries. I don't think we see a tear leave his eyes, but come on, look at this. Or, I don't want to kill guys, uh, I'm so mature now. Now watch me cry on screen. Fucking Kratos cry. Ugh. I don't even know if I'm supposed to feel sad here. I mean, what, why? He just doesn't want to kill any more gods, I guess, after killing a, a kajillion. <laughs> He's killed so many. Again, what? why am I supposed to be sad here? Oh, he misses his son. He misses his wife. I, that's it, I guess? I don't know. There's not like a, a particular incident that is inciting this, so it's hard to feel something. And then he has a vision of his wife. This is actually the second vision. I didn't name the previous one, because honestly, none of the three visions matter at all. They're completely pointless. There's only one purpose they serve to the story. Kratos settled.
The ultimate Giga Chad settled. Prove me wrong. You can't. Like, this is another pointless scene. Somewhat. I don't give a fuck about this. You're far better off knowing as little as possible. Oh, I'm so ashamed. I kid did bad no, stuff in the past. I'm such a bad dad. Self- uh, all the self-pity is disgusting. <laughs> now we play as Atreus again, and he makes his way to Helheim to find the next piece. And spoilers, the piece isn't there, and no, they don't explain it either. Someone told me that Atreus was lying, but if he was lying, why would the mask be glowing when he's going in the supposed right direction? Was he manipulating it? He seemed rather confused when it wasn't there, and freeing Garm, the giant wolf there, which can tear through dimensions, that seemed to be unintentional, so how could it be a lie? Let's be honest, it's just more contrived bullshit. So Heimdall, fittingly, shits all over him for fucking everything up, so Atreus runs home to Daddy. And honestly, him hugging his dad is one of the only decent moments of the story, so I won't shit on it. So it's up to Kratos and Atreus to team up to imprison Garm once again. You get a pretty cool boss battle, and then at the end, our expectations are unsubverted. As it turns out, Atreus trapped Fenrir's soul, and now releases it into Garm, who now becomes Fenrir, right? So now there's a giant heckin' Pupperino. How very cute. Then we get a scene where Kratos finally accepts his son is a big boy and can take care of himself. At first I was annoyed with this scene because Atreus was coming across as pretty condescending to his father, but obviously that wasn't really the intention of the writing here. Falling back into my old ways. Angry. Really? Really? This is a pointless scene! Another pointless scene, dude! How many goddamn pointless scenes are there? At first I was annoyed with this scene because Atreus was coming across as pretty condescending. Without you? I got reckless. Overconfident. Made stupid mistakes. It's not character development, it's character assassination. At first I was annoyed with this scene because Atreus was coming across as pretty condescending. Don't be sorry, father. Be better. Let's go home. This is just classic, like, I didn't have a good father, so I'm gonna write what I think a good father is, and guess what? They're failing. This is not, no. This is, no. No, no, no. This is how you raise a pussy. Nothing is- At first I was annoyed with this scene because Atreus was coming across as pretty condescending. So while it was somewhat sloppily handled, and I really don't like the message of be better, especially the implications in the story that you should never kill your enemies, right? All your enemies can be forgiven. He left me no choice. Because it was necessary, not because it was written. even though this is not something anybody actually follows in real life. Try and find a leftist who doesn't think a conservative is a Nazi. Good fucking luck. And they're certainly not looking to forgive him anytime soon, but... Once again, at least I felt something here. It's character assassination. Well. It's obvious that this version of Kratos is very lonely and doesn't want to let go of his son. But Atreus is a big boy now, even though I think he's only 13, so he's really not that much of a big boy. This is one of many moments in the story that you can tell a lot of elements of this game were rushed and it was clearly supposed to be a trilogy. We're getting major story development points all crammed into this massive 25 hour experience that a lot of elements feel underdeveloped. Like remember in the beginning of the story when Atreus was supposed to learn to control his emotions so he could utilize his animal forms? Yeah, well that only really comes up right at the end of the game and he just kind of does it. Dangerous without discipline to control them. You've already taught me discipline. I need more than that. I need answers. Answers you don't have. What do you feel when you change? Just anger. The part of you unleash the wolf with that anger. 
Maybe you just need to find the part that will guide it? How? You can fight with all sorts of emotion in your heart, not just rage. If rage lets it out, another might help you stay you. Bring the wolf, Loki, but under your control! was supposed to learn to control his emotions so he could utilize his animal forms. Yeah, well that only really comes up right at the end of the game and he just kind of does it. I can explain it to you, but I can't understand it for you. But once again, I'm stretching out this review far beyond what it ever needed to be in the first place, so let's get back to it. So when we return to Sindri's house yet again, the gang decides we're not going to kill Heimdall after all, and instead we're going to try and help the people of Vanaheim who are being attacked by Odin's forces. So we once again return there, and once we arrive at Freyr's camp, we find out that the boar that you kill in the beginning of the first game didn't die and is in fact a random black guy. Then help fix this. Hold here, please. Hold, I said, he's losing blood. The last of his kind in all the realm, and you shoot him. You needed food? Target practice. Target practice. I'm I'm so, so sorry. Keep that pressure on. The blame is mine. I should have kept a closer eye. Will he die? I will not let him. You clearly saved the boar in the first game. Once again, who the hell would remember this and why? It doesn't matter in the least, and yet again... That does not change my point that he becomes a random fucking black guy who does nothing of value in this game. That was the clear point. Again, for someone who says I didn't pay attention to the story, you clearly didn't pay attention to my video. I'm not making this shit up. What is the point of this character? Someone tell me why this character exists. You can't. Her advisor and friend. Counselor to the Vanir. And yes, while exiled at Midgard, I was trapped in my boar form. I could use another shapeshifter's help. Go with him, Atreus. I will aid Freya. Yes, sir. With their attention drawn elsewhere, you and I can assault the main force from behind. While Atreus and Hildesfini slip in to rescue your brother in the confusion. Yes. And when did Lord Freya put you in charge? He didn't. And I don't want it. But when I have counsel to give, I can't help but give it. Love, he taught Lord Freyr everything he knows. That is good enough for me. I know. I'm just... Tired. As are we all. So, after meeting some more heckin' pupperinos and gaining the ability to manipulate the sun and moon... That's my favorite type of prophecy story, where you need to avoid the prophecy, but you're also required to fulfill every part of it. Oh, God. It's stupid. We encounter Heimdall once again. And even though I said earlier it's probably my favorite boss fight in the game, it is kind of dumb when you think about it. His ability is to read people's minds, right? So the gimmick of the boss is you have to use the spear and detonate it on the ground to be able to hit him. But if he can read your mind, why doesn't he know when you're about to detonate the spears and simply just jump out of the way of the ones on the ground? Maybe because he has to meet you directly in the eyes? and so he can't also watch the spears on the ground. But if that's the case, why can't you use any other method of ranged attack to hit him? Like maybe when you call the axe back to you, it hits him in the back of the head or something? You gotta overpopulate his senses, see? And I got just the thing in mind to help you do it. Eventually you do kill him and it's very unsatisfying. I was hoping Kratos would crush his skull into the dust. Kind of like how he pulverized Hercules' face in God of War 3, but no, they pussy out on any kind of disturbing gore. <laughs> and so the gang meets up with the Discount Avengers squad, and they escape on a flying boat. Unfortunately, they're attacked by wyverns, and so... Broken Sword Guy, I think his name was Hamburger or something, sacrifices himself, and they build it up to be this really epic moment, like, oh my god, I can't believe that guy sacrificed himself. Who was he again? And so we once again return to Sindri's house, 
And luckily Heimdall had Gallerhorn in his hands, which allows you to open portals to all the realms at once. You know Heimdall. I grant you that he's a spiteful, vicious little shit. And so loyal Odin entrusted him with Gallerhorn. I guarantee all of us predicted what the climax of the story would be as soon as they told us what this thing did. And so, this is where another very stupid moment happens in the story. Atreus, for some reason that is not explained in the least, decides he wants to help Odin again complete the mask because maybe the secrets of the universe will help you find a way out so that you don't have to kill him. How do I know you won't be running off to Asgard next? If I did, at least I'd be somewhere I could make a difference. Now that is crazy talk. That is the craziest of all possible talks. Why? Odin had the chance to kill me, but he didn't. He offered to teach me. Maybe if I had more answers, I could prevent- Prevent what? What is this about? It doesn't matter. Just let it go, okay? Because all that matters is that you are safe. But that's not all that matters. Who's keeping you safe? I do not need you to protect me. You sure about that? What do you know? I thought we all agreed we were gonna kill him now. Why are we suddenly doubting this? Why would you help the villain complete his quest? From a tactical perspective, am I wrong? I don't much like it, but it is our best play. Dividing Odin's focus would buy us time. And give us a pair of eyes in the enemy's inner sanctum. But if there is truly a source of infinite knowledge, you can't let Odin have it. If I can finish what I started there, awaken the mask, get answers, maybe that's our way out of this. And you know what's even funnier about this is who's in the room right now with them? If you know the twist, you know what I'm talking about. It really brings some dramatic irony to this scene on a second watch. And so Atreus journeys to Asgard again, and we soon find out that Thor is a depressed alcoholic who knows his daughter and wife are disappointed in him, and he just wants his daddy's love. God, this fucking sucks. Well, Thor is a fat fuck in this, and not muscular in any way, which is very disappointing. Thor is just a fat fuck with no muscle definition, but he's a badass. And they try and make it entertaining by having a bar fight scene, but guess what? It just takes away some of your combat mechanics. That's the opposite of fun. You should give me special mechanics just for this encounter. Anyway, Atreus and Thor make their way to Niflheim. You get the mask without anything really special happening in this realm. And then Odin shows up, but so does Sif and a couple Valkyries, and Sif manages to convince Thor to try and kill Atreus since Kratos killed Heimdall. I'm doing the best I can to keep this family together. If that were true, you'd stand up to your father for once in your life. You're right. Honey. No. You're right. They were thrown at the Allfather's problems like brittle knives to a mountain face. And for what? But he uses his get out of jail free card that Sindri conveniently thought to give him before he returned to Asgard again. I can't let you go back without this. A hammer? Your key, please. Why are you worrying so much today? I just need to look out for the people I care about. It keeps bad things from happening to them. Now the good guys have the mask. Except one problem. Brock, of all characters, notices that Tyr is calling Atreus Loki. And so it turns out Tyr was Odin the whole time and he kills Brock. But Kratos manages to get the mask out of his hands just in time. So it was completely pointless? Well, I guess not completely, but I don't care about Brock at all, I'll be honest. Once again, the writers are trying to build this up as a huge emotional moment, but if you don't like any of the characters, this scene's gonna completely fall flat, and it gets even worse when you realize, because Odin didn't get the mask, the game is now dragged out for another three hours. Are you fucking- you can't run what, away from this what, what the fuck? Odin won't stop until no, we stop No, what the fuck? No, we no, no. This is extreme character assassination. 
This is fucked. No, let me back in there. Fuck you. No, no. What are you doing? Stop. This is- oh my god, this is the shittiest writing in the world. Yeah, Masterpiece, my fucking dick! Estrogen wins. I- I just love... The women are more masculine than the men, and no one's complaining about it. You know, again, the people who pretend to be against wokeness, but nobody's against this game. Suck my fucking cock, you sellout pieces of Probably. shit. Can we? I wanna know how much money I they got. From Sony, there's I'll no way. Hunting. If they're that cowardly that they didn't get any chance. money and they just didn't want to piss off their fans, fuck you! you all they're pathetic. Yeah. All of them are fucking pathetic. Sure Every reviewer. We have been wounded. No. Yes. No one cared about Brock that much. Nope. This is a distraction. NPCs maybe, but not like real humans. You know, humans who can imagine the apple in their head, right? The humans who have an inner voice. No. Now NPCs, maybe they shed a tear for little blue man. Nobody else. And to be honest, even those three hours feel really rushed. Because in the final act of the game, the heroes decide they need to build up their armies across all the realms. So that sounds like a huge epic quest on its own, right? Could probably be the plot of its own game, and might have been originally. But instead, Kratos and Atreus just make their way to Muspelheim again, meet Surtur, and he's once again another depressed character who doesn't want to help. Specifically because he knows both him and his wife would die, but it turns out that Kratos can use the Blades of Chaos to enhance his powers instead, which actually does have consequences, so I'll give the writers a bit of credit for that. And so, while Kratos and Atreus fight off two Valkyries at the same time, Surtur becomes Ragnarok. But it seems he's not quite ready to start the siege, so Kratos and Atreus return to Midgard, and all of the allies gather and spend one last night in a little camp outside of the Yggdrasil portal room from the first game. Atreus, who I once again remind you is a teenage boy, requests to sleep with his daddy one last time. There was an old man who chopped wood for his village. Fuck you. Oh my god. You know, when I played God, the old God of War games, you know what I really wanted? I wanted Kratos to tell his fucking son a story. His teenage son a bedtime story. The fuck? Kratos is like crying again. God damn it. Really? I wanted to see Kratos cry. That's really what I wanted to see. I don't think he ever shed a tear on screen, like, remembering his original family. Him killing his original family. I don't know. Maybe they did. I don't remember. But he's crying over some random bullshit. And we are given the final flashback or vision of Faye, Kratos' wife, and it's a completely pointless scene. I wish to better a future that will exist without me whenever that day comes for you and for our son. Yeah, it's amazing how how people don't call out wokeness anymore. Amazing. It's not in video games. Because everyone's a fucking grifter. They know there's views in calling it out in movies and TV shows. Culmination of love is grief? Despite the inevitable. What? Open our Yeah. Exactly. There's no views in shitting on video games that the media tells you to like. But there's plenty of money in shitting on movies and TV shows. It makes no sense. It makes no fucking sense. And then the next morning, right before the final battle, Kratos and Freya give a rousing speech. Probably the worst I've ever seen. I mean, holy shit, there's so much wrong with this scene. I don't even know where to begin. Whether it's the bad cinematography or the incredibly bland room that the actual speech is set in, to the writing, which is not inspiring in the least. I can hide no longer. I do not want this war. We have suffered enough. Why couldn't Kratos give this speech after he blows Gallarhorn? 
Prophecy did not lead us here. Nor will it win this battle. Wars are won by those that are willing to sacrifice everything. If that is the cost of vengeance, so be it. Why couldn't Kratos give this speech after he blows Gallarhorn, and like Jormungandr and Fenrir are in the background or something, and we're given like a wide shot of all the armies or some shit? You know, something like Lord of the Rings, something that feels epic. Man, this is just lame. You can't tell me Sony Santa Monica looked at this and thought, yeah, this is fine, this is cool, this will get the players amped up for the finale. For Brock. And so anyway, he blows the horn, they travel to Asgard, and we get our huge Avengers Endgame moment. And all of our buddies from the two games show up and wage war against Asgard. And it's supposed to be a really cool moment, but honestly, it's not. I know people are gonna say I fucking hate everything, especially since I'm sure plenty of people played this thought this was cool. But none of this crazy epic background stuff that's happening affects the gameplay outside of some random wyverns raining fire on the arenas. If you just ignore the skybox, this might as well just be a normal level of the game, except they just throw a slightly wider variety of enemies against you. It doesn't help that multiple times during the goddamn apocalypse, the characters stop to have a heart-to-heart -heart with each other. Are you fucking kidding me? You've taken all the tension out of the story so many times. Faye's dreams are partly to show their time together and to show how she is still trying to push him to do what she wants. Again, this doesn't even matter to the story at all. The culmination of the three flashbacks, or visions, whatever they are, is for Kratos to tell his son that he should feel bad for the things he kills. He should have empathy for every living creature in the world. I was wrong, Atreus. I was wrong. Open your heart. Open your heart to their suffering. That is your mother's wish. And mine as well. Fucking Kratos, of all people, says this. That is possibly the most defining moment of character assassination. I'm actually kind of annoyed at myself that I brushed over it. So thanks for reminding me of another horrible scene from the end of the game. Not to mention you have to play as Atreus again, and he gets to go full bear mode, guys. He's upgraded from a wolf to a bear. He's climbed another tier on the gay scale. <laughs> And then immediately he talk no jutsus throughed out of killing him, blaming Odin for everything, and it works. Oh my god, the apocalypse is happening. The apocalypse is happening. Do you understand? There's no fucking time, dude. This is this is just a bad movie. I, I love how a good video game story is a bad movie. That's that's what people think. Holy I shit. We've only known this guy for like 10 minutes total of screen time, by the way. <laughs> and so all the good guys team up. Kratos finally has his second showdown against Thor. After beating him, he actually manages to convince him not to fight anymore for the sake of their children. This is God of War. This game series is known for letting you kill gods. That's like one of the main points of playing these games. Again, the power fantasy, but whatever, Kratos is a changed man. He's super mature now, guys. And of course, as soon as Thor agrees to lay down his arms, Odin stabs him in the back, literally, and kills him. And so now we have our final boss battle, with Kratos, Atreus, and Freya all teaming up to lay waste to him. 
And it's an absolute button mash fest. All I did was spam runic attacks the entire time and did surprisingly well, beat him in one try. It really feels like a step down from every other final boss in the series. Even the fight against Balder felt more epic than this. Because there's really no sense of scale, you're just fighting him in a basement. And he shoots magic spells at you. Oh, and somehow, I almost forgot, at the end of the first phase against Odin, Freya gives the cringiest line in the game. You have no hold on me anymore. Wow, so brave. How good you Stunning and please. fucking brave, dude. Ah! Not woke at all, guys. Not woke at all. Oh, husband. You always sought knowledge well. Now, I'm going to teach you what it's like to lose everything. <laughs> Bow to your queen! Really? My god, this comes across as some kind of feminist torture fantasy. What the fuck? And of course, when you finally beat him, instead of killing him, Kratos lets his son decide, and he decides to trap Odin's soul inside of one of the giant marbles. But then, like an absolute Chad, Sindri comes in and smashes the marble. That's what comes next. I take back everything I said about him being a possible pedophile. As soon as his brother dies, he actually becomes the only other based character in the game. And so the heroes have won, except there's one problem. Because Surtur didn't fuse with his waifu, Ragnarok is out of control, but the heroes manage to escape off screen. And the game ends with you traveling to the top of some mountain, where Atreus tells his father that he needs to go off on his own quest with Angraboda to go find the rest of the giants. And in the only other touching moment in the game, Kratos finally lets go of his son and allows him to be his own man. And I really have nothing to complain about here. I think this part was actually well done. Loki will go. Atreus. Atreus remains. Iron Giant did it better. Well, yeah, that's because Iron Giant sacrificed himself. Kratos is still alive. And then immediately afterward, we find out there was a secret second prophecy that Kratos was to become the new revered god of the Norse realms, effectively tying him to this place, meaning this is the end of his story. And thank God for that. I don't want to see Sony butcher Kratos anymore, but I absolutely promise you, I will not buy a God of War game starring Atreus. So they better either reboot this shit or just let it die. The sad thing is, you get to play the post game immediately after this, and there's a bunch of other side quests, there's all those berserker super bosses to fight. And when I played a few more hours, I actually was having fun consistently. You know why? Because I could actually do what I want. I could actually engage in the gameplay and fight enemies and just ignore the ambient background dialogue because it really didn't matter. Without having to deal with forced walking sequences or countless cutscenes or stupid emotional bait or any of the other bullshit that is in modern Sony games. Just wandering around the realms, even though it was areas I'd already been to was more fun than the actual goddamn story mode. The linear story was less interesting than wandering around the world doing side quests. How do you fuck up this bad? Forgive me if I don't pay attention to the countless pointless dialogue. Quit talking over the game. Buh, 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 buh. You really want to hear all this shitty dialogue, dude? Blow the $70 yourself on the shitty game if you really care about the dialogue. I'm the idiot. Me. I'm the guy who doesn't understand video games, he doesn't understand narratives. But the game's totally 10 out of 10, guys. If you just ignore all the constant cutscenes and walking simulator moments and fake loading screens and shitty Atreus gameplay segments, it's totally 10 out of 10. Game of the year 2022, no doubt.
I'm not gonna name any names here because I don't exist to just start drama with random other YouTubers, but there are people who are supposedly real film critics, people who actually analyze stories in their structure, who are ignoring all of the obvious flaws with this game. If this was a film, these people would be ripping it to shreds, but because it's a video game, they have no standards. Just tuned into Mauler's stream for 10 seconds and he's soying out over the dog. Yeah. I can't believe we're like 10 minutes into the game and they already did like a seriously impactful death. How the hell did you do that? Performances, man. They're already top notch. Do you hear like a... Uh... In, in a, I, I'm not 100% sure on the name of the actor for Atreus, but man, he was selling that emotion. I, I like as a almost response to the trauma, Kratos is like, let's, 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 let's fight, let's just get our minds off it. And Atreus, this time, doesn't even, um, like, usually he probably concede with a complaint, but this time he just says, nah, fuck that. And I'm, I'm mourning my doggo. Yeah. And Kratos respects it too. And he's soying out over the dog. Yeah. Like, why do we even like video games? Uh, this is why I want to ask, like, people like Mahler, where it's like, if you're okay with this, if you think this is amazing, Training why do you like me? video games? Why not just watch movies <laughs> that, uh, or TV idea? shows or Training? read a book? I mean, like, I'm not I, I doing great, anything. But, uh, I just can't believe he literally does not hold the same standards to movie, like, that he does for movie storytelling as he does for games. Like, this literally has almost all the same problems as the Marvel movies have. But he's just letting that slide? Are you fucking kidding me? Mahler hates Last of Us 2, but not that. Yeah, exactly. I'm wondering if he hates Last of Us 2 just a bandwagon, because I feel like the two games have a lot of the same problems. Today, we will be better. What the fuck is this? We're here to kill gods. But this is the worst possible time to be having this conversation. The apocalypse is happening. The apocalypse is happening, and they're having a heart to heart. You're telling me Mauler was okay with this? They don't kill us first. This is what I'm saying. Like, uh, holy fuck! Why have you stopped? All these Ragnarok people who are respected in the community are incompetent hacks. Any thoughts on how Mauler has nothing bad to say about the sound of message? I, I already like said this, many things. I think he has incredibly shit taste in video games. I'm glad he only talks about like movies and TV shows now. As far as I know, I stopped watching his channel like a couple years ago. But uh, I'm glad he stopped talking about video games because those were his worst videos. Definitely. I mean, the game is written by Anthony Birch. Yes. Uh, yeah. I uh, yeah. I know. I, I I actually left a line for that. I I'm, I was thinking. What do I put there? What do I put is like the clip to represent Anthony Birch, but again, you know, Mahler likes it, so I mean, it's a masterpiece. I'm just saying. Putting off Mahler the got off at that part. Exactly. Did you see the sword protect it's him? Wow. That's the worst idea. I do want to show everyone the mask. Is he really a full blown grifter now? Mm. Like, why is that impressive? This, this is, is Netflix dream. level writing. Yes. You ever, but no, it's awesome. I mean,. The king of EFAP said it's great, guys. It's good. Oh my god, no! This is cringe! I'm cringing! Just start tearing people's heads off and having their entrails, like, decorate this everywhere. This is horrible. Yeah, just stop writing. Just stop. Mahler likes this game, by the way. He loves it. He thinks it's a great game. <laughs> They are really pretending we're supposed to care about this. 10 out of 10, though. Mauler loves it, dude. Great game. Mauler liked this, yeah. Remember that. God, it's so bad. Mauler likes this. Just keep that in mind. Just keep remembering. Mauler likes this. If, the problem is, most people are dumb, and they become fanboys, so they're not going to be like, huh, Mauler... The guy famous for, like, really logical criticism is ignoring all the logical criticisms from this game. Now, are you gonna remember that and take that forward and maybe reconsider some of his opinions? No, they won't, because most people are retarded, you know. Does Mahler actually enjoy this? Is How much has he played to the game? I can't believe Mahler... Well, I can believe it, but... Yeah. Imagine playing this and you're like, this is awesome, I love this, this is great. How? In what way? 
I mean, I don't know, dude. Mauler's game criticism has never been that good. Like, I don't like Dark Souls 2, but his Dark Souls 2 nine-hour series was very flawed. I, I can't remember anything specific because it's been so many years since I saw it. But I remember being like, this argument doesn't make any sense. Like, multiple times. Like, it, there, Mauler's great game criticism was never that good. It really wasn't. Does anyone like him? Does anyone? Anyone like Atreus? Seriously, any person? Mauler likes him. Oh. Oh, this gave me more reason to not take EFAP seriously on vi on any video game. I mean, I already came to that conclusion a while ago, but... Yeah, actually, I might actually have to agree with that, about EFAP sucking after Dishonored Wolf left. If you play video games, actually play video games, you would notice. This is why I suspect Mauler doesn't really play video games. I don't think he does. Because the lack of level design is so obvious and apparent, and it's boring. Just running in a straight line is boring. Who cares about Mauler? A lot of people, he's pretty popular. He's on, like, four podcasts or something. I wouldn't be surprised if he's on more podcasts than that. Mauler's as bad as act, man. Well, you can judge someone by their friends, right? By their choices and friends. And we know he surrounds himself with degenerates somewhat. I'm gonna, if I'm ever on EFAP, this is not gonna go well. It's not gonna go well at all. I'm just gonna insult all of them and then get banned. That's what's gonna happen. I know exactly what I'm gonna call Rags, which is gonna get me banned. I know exactly what I'm gonna call Jay, which is gonna get me banned. I know. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the problem. They they all have very obvious flaws. It's low low brow, but it's accurate. I'd be interested in debating Mulder on EFAP if you're able to. I don't know. Maybe. See, this is the only thing having an editor would be good for, is there's too many bits Already in this stream that I want to put in the video. I'm, but I would have to go through the entire stream and also, like, say all the things I want to say outside of that. It's just too hard to make that one video. So obviously this guy doesn't have very strong principles or is a liar, as are many people on YouTube. All these people, these supposed people with good integrity that you can always trust if a game is good. My fan of Mauler. I'm a neutral of Mauler. I don't really watch his stuff anymore. I he just I feel like most of his content, fuck it, we could even just check. Most of his content is like crapping on things we already know are bad. Like, yeah, Multiverse of Madness sucked, we all know that. Uh I don't even know what GDELB is. I'm guessing that's something he introduced in the last couple of years. Uh, Critique of Force Awakens Part 4. What the fuck? Uh, ha Wait a minute. Force Awakens. That was the first of the new ones. He's still working on that? Are you fucking kidding me? Black Widow. We all know that was bad. The Father. I don't know what that is. It, dude, I like how just like... See, this is something I can relate to. Just like my channel. He praises something that people don't know what it is. Only 170,000 views, which might sound like a lot, but then you're like, oh, this is 2 million. This has a million. This has 1.5 million. This has 6 million from two years ago. Man, he makes no content anymore. I fucking knew it. He just shows up on podcasts and collects money. Big fucking surprise. And he has a bunch of dick suckers. But I don't hate him. I'm just, it's just a fact. It's, I'm just pointing out facts. I'm, but I would have to go through the entire stream and also, like, say all the things I want to say outside of that. It's just too hard to make that one video. Man, he makes no content anymore. I fucking knew it. They were talking about me in the Mauler subreddit. Imagine being so obsessive. I literally didn't mention him by name in the video. But these... These... These pathetic fuckers... Dig and dig and dig like, oh my god, they, they insulted my favorite e-celeb, but I literally had the courtesy to not bring him up by Gosh, name. Mauler. 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 King of EFAP said it's great, guys. I don't know how anyone could honestly say to themselves this is a 10 out of 10. 
I have to imagine those type of people just don't play games. Which, it, imagine having the audacity to say something's a 10 out of 10 when you've only played like 50 games in your life or something like that. You know what I mean? Like, this doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. How is this 10? Like, I don't even have to tear apart aspects. I just need to ask why people would say this is a masterpiece, right? Well, it doesn't have to be objectively 10 out of 10. I, you couldn't. Objective and game criticism do, don't go together. They just don't. There's a reason why the Maulerites, I'll just call them the Maulerites, whatever, the EFAP people, those type of people don't. They talk about movies and TV, not video games, because fun is subjective, and video, video games are extremely subjective. Like, you can't really argue, like, what one person likes, someone else is going to hate. There's nothing more painful than Game of the Year being a game that's just inferior to another game that's 10 years old. And then people pretending like that's not true just because they like to hit circle a lot of times. These enemies are shitty as fuck. These enemies are just... They're objectively poorly designed. Because there's no quick way to get rid of them, really. Objective and game criticism do, don't go together. They just don't. They're objectively poorly designed. If you've played nearly as many games as I have, there's just too many fucking flaws. Way too many flaws. And, again, we're gonna get into, like, the subjectivity versus objectivity argument, but... I don't really care what people think. Like, I care what I think. Objective and game criticism do, don't go together. They just don't. Don't even give them that. Don't even give them the to each their own. They, no, they just say they have shit taste. That's what I always do. Anyone who said this is Tad Dunn, you're, you're, you're dead to me. Actually dead to me. Objective and game criticism do, don't go together. They just don't. I just want to know how many morons, like would still trust the YouTubers who gave this 10 out of 10 and just be like, oh, well, it was just their opinion. It was totally their opinion. They weren't, they aren't sellouts. Totally not sellouts at all. You have to keep in mind, I thought Raid Shadow Legends was one of the less bad ones. That's why I took that one on top of them paying a lot. Totally not sellouts at all. And if, sell, there's no, I don't think there's any reasonable price that a game developer would pay me to give a good review for their game. I just don't think that exists. You have to keep in mind, I thought Raid Shadow Legends was one of the less bad ones. That's why I took that one, on top of them paying a lot. It is fucking sad to sell out. That's why I took that one, on top of them paying a lot. Oh my god. This sucks. 10 out of 10, I... Someone, I, you know what, if... Never mind, I'm so, I can't do it. I'm already probably blacklisted, but, you know, if anyone wanted to take initiative out of my audience and go and find the people who gave this 10 out of 10 and just, you know, give them, give them a little hello for me, I think, I think. This way. <sighs> the hell's the term? Like honeymoon phase, something like that. Uh, whenever that starts to wear off, people are going to see mm -hmm. the flaws. Now, they're obvious to me. Someone who has, you know, played an sh absolute shit ton of video games, way too many. But to these overly excited fanboys, eventually they'll acknowledge its obvious flaws. Oh man, you're one of the few trusty reviewers left, like G-Man Lives. And I'm like, G-Man Lives thinks every game is good. Like, good luck finding a game G-Man Lives doesn't like. It's, it's pretty rare. You have to keep in mind, I thought Raid Shadow Legends was one of the less bad ones. That's why I took that one, on top of them paying a lot. How do I avoid controlled opposition stuff? Also, please never become like drinker or moist critical. Uh, just don't be a sellout. That's why I took that one, on top of them paying a lot. People aren't being more critical lots of pasta because everyone is a sellout. And I mean basically everyone. That's why I took that one, on top of them paying a lot. Everyone is a fucking grifter. Everybody. That's the only way to make it on YouTube. That's why I took that one, on top of them paying a lot. Like, okay, R retard. I don't care if you don't care. You can't just ignore all the problems. That's the argument I always make for video games. 
There's no such thing as a flawless game, but we nearly took each other's heads off. if the flaws really ruin the enjoyment, which they absolutely do, and you're just lying to yourself. Objective and game criticism do don't go together. They just don't. I'm the idiot. Me. I'm the guy who doesn't understand video games. He doesn't understand narratives. Look at the recommended Twitters. Critical and and uh, or, uh, some ordinary gamers. It's like. That's, like, th that might as well be, a, like, a trifecta of, like, normie shit. Oh, when will be the Actman collab? Uh, probably never, because at some point he became a leftist cuck. I don't know when that was, because I seem to recall him making, uh, Anita Sarkeesian video. I feel like it, if it ever comes to that, I, if, see, always have your receipts, right? And always know your own body of work, right? If people come after me... Use anybody who comes after me is gonna be someone I probably started shit with and the only people I start shit with are people I know I know his shit. I've seen over half his videos at least I saw that video. I Don't care what he says. He's gonna be like, oh, I've changed. Yeah, that really that only works when a leftist says it Have you noticed that? Have you noticed that? I thought G-Man was an Australian Chad. No He's definitely not Chad. He's Australian. Critical Drinker is extremely successful, and a lot of his videos are half-assed. So, I mean, my videos are half-assed too, but, I, like, some of his shit is just, like, completely pointless. I, I just think kids like his accent, to be honest. I, I don't think he's bad at all. Like, I think his channel's fine. Again, he's a mall, right? What's wrong with Drinker? I thought I already explained my problem with Drinker. I just think a lot of his content is pretty low effort. Uh, I don't think he's that funny. I think kids just really like the the fake drunk uh, Scottish accent. Um, I I don't know. It's just like another generic like. I keep calling him Mauler rights. I I definitely want to make it clear Mauler obviously didn't invent film or, or TV or video game criticism or any of that shit. Obviously not. It's just kind of, all of it's like kind of a similar-ish style, you know? It's funny how nobody tries to copy off of Red Letter Media, which, you know, in many ways is like, at least it's higher quality film criticism. I kind of got sick of their stuff eventually, too. But, but Red Letter Media, so at least you know you're getting a little bit higher budget I content, you know? I, I, I just find it, I'm blown away that in the film community, there's a fuck ton of people who are against wokeness in movies and shit. I mean, like, like I brought up, you know, uh, Critical Drinker, you know, he's like one of the most po popular film critics. He's very anti-woke, right? But in video games, there are no anti-woke people. The, name a single, like, actual anti-woke gaming critic why are people protecting game criticism are they being paid off i mean i i really have to start questioning it check out the under the mayo i hate under the mayo though uh for god of war 2018 lots of his points still stands should help your video on this game under the mayo is the doom eternal fanboy I, I don't like him. For me, I wish I could make super lazy edited videos like this. Because then you can spend about, you know, 80% of the time making the video, like, scripting. Not that I write scripts, but that's obviously how he does his. Griffin Gaming is annoying weird. Yeah, he, he's a perfect example of how to make it on YouTube with, like, shit quality content. I mean, he is basically just the gaming clone of Leafy, so... You just react to everything that's happening. I mean, the dude mother fucking defended COD Vanguard. I can't believe I have to, like, take Activan's side and be like... This is, like, it's a shit game. Everyone knew it was a shit game, and Griffin Gaming's like... Dude, it's great. I don't care about any of these things you're talking about. I don't care. You know how much I'm gonna laugh? You know how much I'm gonna fucking laugh if these fat... Uh, I almost said it. If these bundles of sticks d d don't want to address my existence because they think it'll make me more popular. Do you know how sad that is? Do you know how absolutely sad that is? That That is beyond pathetic. Why am I not surprised? Under the Mayo released a review for God of War Ragnarok. It's pretty long, but some parts are worth watching. Stop trying to shill him. He shit on me for my Doom Eternal video. How do you guys forget this? <laughs> I think he literally called it the worst Doom Eternal review on YouTube or something. <laughs> Griffin seems to have had quite the character arc. He definitely seems to be a bit different 
than I remember, but I don't know. If he at least likes my shit, whatever. I don't, I don't really care. I, I don't have anything specific against him. I love your views, my man, but your woke argument is a bit old. I don't think you do love my reviews, then. That happens to any of my videos. If any of my videos get into the algorithm, oh, it's always normies hey. who hate any criticism. Yeah, I, I wish people Are brought back to... disliking videos over, gre like, like principles. Instead of, like, stupid That's fanboyism, terrible. people actually dislike the video that you just disagree with, like, the premise, or... Like, I feel like dislikes are used for all the wrong reasons. It's just, like, triggered children. Anyone asking about me balding is getting timed out. Like, this- that's the final warning. It's just, like, triggered children. Yeah, that is a thousand likes. Well, you guys do your job. Dislike bomb the video. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I get in trouble from YouTube. Every one of you come here and dislike this video. <laughs> No, no, I might get in trouble from YouTube. Uh, you, you do what you must, I guess. Instead of it being like, oh, I'm an adult and the premise of this video is stupid or something. Like, like I disliked Act Man's latest video because I thought it was completely pointless. And, uh, I completely disagree with the stupid statement he said about gaming is better than ever, which is just such a... There is no, and yes, I'm removing the context from that statement, but in context, it's still stupid. It's so, so, regardless, sure the there is no here. context where you can That's say that and be correct. What was side two was so woke. See, like, goddamn, the woke, people complaining about wokeness is so inconsistent. The amount of the people I had to unsubscribe from over the years. I'm subscribed to about 40 channels right now, and I think over the course of, you know... My account is, what, 14 years old? I probably subscribed to like 400 channels in that time, you know? I've just unsubscribed from so many. Barely been getting into the algorithm lately, so who knows, maybe they're finally starting to suppress me. I saw that declining dislike-dislike ratio. It's every time, it's just... Because it's not like millennials give a fuck. Was it Cor Corey Balrog that did God of War 2 and 3, though? I don't think that's true. Maybe it is, but I, I find that hard to believe. Get educated, motherfucker. I've ten saddest or dark moments in games. I'd rather just do, like, edgy contrarian shit. My mother wanted me to, you know, pass out candy to kids. I didn't want to do it, but then she kind of forced me to do it. And... We can get across from up here. I don't know, it was cringe. <laughs> you forced to do something by your mommy at age 27. Yep. That's what happens when you live with your mommy. There are, are more YouTubers than you think that delete comments they don't like. And some of them have admitted to it. It's like, what the hell is wrong with you? Like, how fucking pathetic have people got? Anyone asking about me balding is getting timed out. Like, this- that's the final warning. How did we go from a Greek tragedy, which yeah, had a lot of juvenile moments, it was definitely intended for edgy teenage boys to a degree, but that's not to say the original games had no depth. There's a video called God of War Was Always Deep, You Cowards. Great title, by the way. By Endless Jess that covers this subject pretty extensively. So I'll just direct you to that video instead of extending this one even further. To now this infantile, pseudo-mature Marvel movie for man-children. People who refuse to actually grow up and have real responsibilities. That being getting a wife and having children, right? Being an anti-natalist does not make you mature. It just makes you a depressed nihilist like everyone else. And this is not me acting holier than thou. I have never pretended to be mature. I know what I like. I like the super edgy shit. I like Darksiders. I like the original God of War games. I even like fucking Shadow the Hedgehog. It's a bad game, but I like how over the top it is given it's a fucking cartoon character with guns. It's you people who are pretending that this is some super deep shit that have the issue. The Last of Us 1 actually was somewhat deep to a degree. It was a very well told story even though it was a story we'd already heard dozens of times by now, right? This is not well handled in the least. The writing team is highly incompetent, and in no small part because Anthony Birch wrote for it. A man who is a literal comma mia and whose wife divorced him and took his Wii U. And he's done plenty of other pathetic things in his time, 
But if you let an actual comma mia write for God of War, what the fuck is wrong with you, Sony? You are fucking dead to me. And I know I've already said that multiple times, but they are so dead to me at this point, dude. I'm only playing these games to review them. That's it. Certainly not for my own enjoyment. Now, all of that being said, is this a bad game? No, it's not. And only because the gameplay is good. The combat designers did their job. In fact, they're the only people on this team worth their salt. They actually made this dumpster fire fun, at least for the 20% of the time that you're actually fighting things. The other 80% was either incredibly boring or insulting to both my intelligence and my masculinity. And I think that was the intention. I've said it once and I'll say it again. Games are not made for gamers anymore. And they're slowly trying to not make them for men anymore either, at least not catering to men's tastes. They're trying to make games quote unquote for everyone. There is no such thing. You cannot make a good game that also appeals to everybody. You just can't. You can make a mediocre game that does that, and many exist. But a good game caters to a specific audience. And unfortunately, they do not want the God of War audience. Fuck this game, and fuck all the Sony fanboys who think it's a masterpiece. That word has now lost all meaning. I hate to say it, but Elden Ring is probably game of the year this year. Despite having one of the most critical videos of it, I think it's considerably better than this game. That's about it. I'll see you next time, guys. It's obvious that this dude didn't like the game before he played it. And oh, it, so I didn't like it before I played it. it. Yeah. Really That's the ultimate it. cope. <laughs> oh boy, we could get a recap because, you know, the game was so good that we forgot the entire story. Oh boy, more sad Kratos. That's what I've always wanted to see, sad Kratos. Only when... It's kill- he's killing his family, because at least that's understandable, but... What- what is he... What is he sad about this time? I didn't like it before I played it, yeah. That's the ultimate cope. Quit talking over the game! You really want to hear all this shitty dialogue, dude? Blow the $70 yourself on the shitty game, if you really care about the dialogue. I didn't like it before I played it, yeah. That's the ultimate cope. Sad equal deep, according to game journals, yeah. From what I've seen of the leaks, and no, I will not say what I've seen for the few people who care here. I, I would guess most people who came here don't give a shit about spoilers, still not gonna say anything. Uh, this is the last Jedi of God of War, from what I've heard. If, if it is as bad as... And I'm... 90% sure that the leaks are correct, so. That, oh, and I don't understand what's going on, oh. In fact, actually, if you're asking to hear the dialogue, again, you're part of the problem. All this sucks. None of this matters. Have I really not been paying attention that much? That, oh, and I don't understand what's going on, oh. This, yeah, this guy's real based, guys. He's real anti-woke. He's literally saying all the things left to say. It's a, he might as well be reading out of their playbook. Even if he does think, like, oh, you know, they've gone too far. He's clearly center-left at, at best. And once again, the most tired leftist argument of all. He just hated the game before he even played it. My question is, why do you keep adding politics to everything? Like, how is that leftist? How is anything I said in this entire video like leftist at all like we can even just look back to what i said i said i didn't feel like looking at the rest of your review because the review is bad and you probably didn't like the game before you played it how the fuck is that leftist at how does how does politics have anything to do with that at all i didn't say one thing in the video at all that that was political except for the fact that you think the game is woke that's the only political thing i said like everything I say it just goes through your ear and comes out the other as leftist. Nothing I said was leftist, bro. I just said your review is fucking trash. If somebody says a yo mama joke to you, you're gonna think it's fucking leftist. Everything is a leftist argument to this man. I mean, god damn it. I, uh, I'm, I'm actually mad. I knew I would be mad. It took me over a week to make my video. I'm glad you responded to it with your half-assed shitty opinions, you parasite. Yeah, that is a thousand likes. Well, you guys do your job. Dislike bomb the video. I don't give a shit. I don't care if I get in trouble from YouTube.
Every one of you come here dislike this video. <laughs> no, no, I might get in trouble from YouTube. Uh, you, you do what you must, I guess. Uh, I, I'm done. Okay, I think I'm gonna end the stream now. Like, I feel like dislikes are used for all the wrong reasons. It's just like triggered children. Or, here's an idea, you're a fucking fanboy with your head up your ass, you have really shit taste in video games because you haven't played any really good games, evidently. From 1980 all the way until like 2005, the vast majority of video games had minimal cutscenes. All of the ones that had excessive story were notable for that, because the vast majority of games didn't have more than an hour of cutscenes across the entire game. It's only in the past 10 years that games have had more and more cutscenes, which you would know if you actually played video games, which I don't think you do, which means you have no authority to talk about games. And you clearly haven't seen many of my videos where I've talked about games I like that are obviously primarily gameplay focused. So again, this is an embarrassment. You should absolutely feel ashamed of yourself that you shit this video out without thinking about it for more than two seconds. But no, you're going to continue to churn out content and slowly accrue more and more subscribers because YouTube doesn't care about quality, it only cares that you cover trending topics. Which I'll admit is something I've done myself many times over the past three years. It is a necessary evil to gain any traction on this website. But not a single one of these points refutes any argument I made in the video. Not a single argument I made in the video has been refuted about it being a giant fucking movie game, about it being woke as fuck, about the combat being too similar to the last one, which I actually pulled my punches on that. I didn't make that a big point. I did in my original draft, but I decided to be nice and mostly stay positive for the combat section. About Kratos' character assassination, about Atreus being an effeminate cuck, about Freya being a Mary Sue, none of these things were refuted. These are all the most important criticisms of the game. And then there's the lack of gore, there's the Marvel movie ripoff shit. There's the fact that this game is clearly made for people who don't actually enjoy video games, which is why you're not even playing the game the majority of the time. But if you love movies, if you love staring at the fucking screen, not touching the controller except when a fake quick time event comes up, then you'll love this, I guess. Game of the year 2022, right? So I honestly have no idea how to end this video. Uh, Synthetic Man wins, commenters lose again. Big surprise, I'm the greatest. See you next time, guys. It's all right. All right, so there's Ryan Johnson, mark number one. Oh look, low Reddit humor. He's turning a page with a pipe. If you didn't play the first one, don't play this one. It's that fucking simple. I hate... I used to get mad about this all the time when I was a teenager, where people would play sequels to games without playing the first. It's like, okay, maybe if you're like a kid and your parent buys you the latest one or something, then I get it, but... It, it doesn't make sense otherwise, especially if plot the plot matters, which it absolutely does. Okay, I have a serious question. What's the point of distinguishing between a block breaker and unblockable if he combos after a block breaker with a unblockable tag? That's bullshit. Emotional manipulation. Intent does not matter. We need like a counter for this shit. That's number two. You seem like a calm and reasonable person. Are you? A calm and reasonable person. He's too fat to be intimidating. He doesn't sound Nordic, he sounds like a loan shark. Yeah, I, again, the Ryan Johnsoning gets tiresome after a while. It's just this, subvert your expectations. Instead of like Zeus, who was, you know, like a Giga Chad, we have a fucking, uh... Oh, that was a bad point to pause. Is there anything over here? Okay. Now why does this exist then? Just for continuity?
I love when games tell me, don't go that way. Well, that used... To, there was a time, maybe a brief time, where that meant you should go that way because there's secrets. Now when they tell you not to go that way... Yeah, let's fucking... Now when they tell you not to go that way, they really mean it. Like, it's like, there's nothing over there. We're just... We've just wasted time modeling this area. Is everything okay? Hi, old friend. Just looting no near chest. We'll be right along. My dad likes Lou. Uh. My dad likes Lou. Who doesn't? Who doesn't like Lou? That's not funny. I told him everything. Everything? You waited my son disobeying me. No, I, I kept an eye on him. On your behalf. Nothing risky. Everything very safe. Somebody else speak. I love how Kratos is the main fucking character, and he's the butt of the jokes. They're constantly mocking him being, like, a masculine man. This is... It just gets disgusting after a while. Yeah, uh, this is what Marvel movies have done to humor. I mean, just not being allowed to be offensive in any way is kind of kind of what destroyed humor, really. You don't necessarily have to be offensive to be funny, but not being allowed to be offensive really steers humor in a specific horrific direction. And it takes someone truly talented to write something funny that doesn't rely on, you know, offending something. I'm so tired of the Marvel humor. Please make it stop. Faster. I'd even be better than you one day, huh? If you are not, I have failed. Oh. No. Your son is a pussy. He will never be better than you, Kratos. <laughs> 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 anyway. <laughs> Sweeping ham, so thanks to two bucks. How's Dad of War? Um more like Soy of War or God of Soy or Dad of Soy. I don't know. John Winterman, inventor of winter. Her name was Calliope. Yep. Calliope. What happened? It was long ago. I killed her. <laughs> I should the alpha. Tough fight. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna alpha your anus, Freya, you piece of shit. <laughs> oh, if these cobblestones could talk. Then they'd have mouths. Oh god, they, it made it worse. Disgusting mouths. What the fuck is this humor, you dude? With your bow? I feel like I need to cleanse my palate by listening to N-word screaming compilations or something. Sit the fuck down. You're a fucking little nerd and you're going for objective? Sit the fuck down. Sit the fuck down. Sit the Look at you, bro! You're nine kills, bro! That is literally nativities, bro! Get your fucking money up, you fucking black George Floyd welfare collection cotton picking torch monkey son of a bitch! Hey! Those are fucking awful. I wish I will find this man. I, I will give him some Reddit gold. I don't oh my god, guys. I'm gonna get banned from the game. I hope Act Man doesn't expose my YouTube channel for my racism. Why do these character models look so awkward? Look at him. Like... I don't know if he, he just kind of looks autistic to me, but like him staring off to the side and not directly into the camera looks really weird. Does that not look weird? Looks weird. I don't know if it's because of the upgrade or not. It just seems like the Blades of Chaos do less damage. I guess they're supposed to be AoE or something, but I don't like it. No, we can face this. We just need to chase it off. Scan it. Something. There is no making things right. Only better than they were. You heard it here, guys. You can never atone for your sins. God of War Ragnarok 2022. That's not enough. It seldom is. 
if you commit a crime, it, it is always bad. You're oh, forever bad, says the leftist. Why the hell can't you grab enemies whenever you want? Because that would be too many like mechanics for the average work. person to understand. This has been asked before, but what is the optimal time amount a cutscene should be? In my, um, in my Ratchet & Clank 2 review, I basically said one minute. One, I'd say like one to two minutes. It depends on if, if the if it's a major story cutscene. I I say you could go up to five minutes. Like you could have a five minute cutscene if it's really important to the story. Jesus, just watch the game. Honest Whaley, you basically just proved all of our points. Watch the game. Watch the game. Just just. Sit, sit on that thought. Sit on that statement for a while. If you do not see a problem with the statement, watch the video game, you are ruining the industry. You are part of the fucking problem. Like, you could have a five minute cutscene if it's really important to the story. You are ruining the industry. You are part of the fucking problem. What I think of the soundtrack, definitely not as good. There's no memorable tracks so far. No memorable tracks so far. The God of War is a coward, a weak coward. Don't don't you like your expectations being subverted? See what I mean, dude? This this is the last Jedi of, of God of War. It is, and yet people are saying it's fucking awesome. Two God of Wars who don't seek war. I don't know how to. Help. Modern writing, in a nutshell. <laughs> Tears voice so bad. All the voice acting is is normal in this. Nothing is epic. I see why my sons fell to you. Even this lesser version of you. But I am not my sons. And your boy, all father, has plans for him. Nothing sounds like dramatic and over the top. Because it, it, it Ryan Johnson, dude. The guy who directed this. I actually worked on the other God of War games, so I don't know why he's doing this subvert your expectation shit, but it's just the poison, the poison of California and modern politics and the way the world has shifted. I'm the only sane man in this mad world. The, the cuck writers want to kill Kratos when Atreus dying would definitely be the better writing, like a thousand percent. What was the point of that? That was fucking pointless. It was just like, oh man, remember him? I mean B. <laughs> you know? Compare Odin design to Zeus, massive letdown. Yeah, no, they wanted to subvert your expectations, don't you get it? It's part of the Ryan Johnson experience. Does anyone, like, seriously, I want to know, like, any real human being, not, not an NPC, but does any real human being, like, oh man, I want Freya to be good guy. I liked her in the first game. She would need to be a good guy to help us. We all team up against the evil Odin. He's a fascist. Oh no. Mind if I take I've heard change. about this. I promise I'll be brief. Here we fucking go. Pardon the intrusion. The old Kratos would have grabbed that thing and snapped its neck with one hand. Ah. Jone, the story is uh Odin bad. Gotta kill Odin. There you go. Because we were looking for Tyr, but we found him in the first zone, so... Now, I guess we're just finding a way to kill him. That's about it. Oh, I see. This is literally train- like, tutorial zone. What the hell's the point of that? You can practice your combos for YouTube videos, and then make a clickbait thumbnail like, Whoa, this- this combo sick! This combo crazy, bro! What is Tyr doing? It, being a pussy. Because our expectations are subverted, don't you get it? A god of war who doesn't want to fight. 
It's the classic cinematic soundtrack where there's no memorable tracks and the game is nearly silent when things aren't happening. Because God forbid someone hear a three minute loop of a good memorable track in a video game, in a modern fucking video game. No memorable tracks. Time to go back in. Nope. Player choice? What's that? I don't know. It's a modern game. Player choice doesn't exist. A tempting treasure chest! Damn the sand! I wonder how much money they wasted having, like, a line of dialogue for every slightly notable thing in the game. I'm sorry, it just reflects how little I give a shit about this. Imagine if Atreus actually did become evil and Kratos had to kill his son. I think that would be way more interesting than what they're doing. Oh. Uh, this is like an alternate universe version of, uh, uh, Freya's house. I don't know how- how the hell does- Lo uh, Atreus not recognize it. Isn't it kind of obvious? I'm 14 and this story is so deep. Yeah, really. Why'd you refuse to fight me? Every outcome would mean defeat. What does that mean? What? I have never wished you harm, Freya. You helped us. <laughs> I'm disgusted with this Kratos. Disgusted. Well, considering how Spartans are made, it's no wonder you turned out as you did. Your fate was sealed from the start. Fate will become. I used to think no, so. really, uh, they're gonna shit the on Spartans now. Spartans are absolute chads. Are you, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me, dude? In Sparta, we were taken from our homes as children and raised in the Agoji. We marched though we drowned, fought for scraps or starved. Our elders beat us till we could not stand. At night, we made our way home, alone, or were food for wolves. That is how Spartans are made. Uh, they're gonna shit on Spartans now. It is one Groa concealed because of this champion. I still don't even remember who Groa is. I really don't. Like, I, it's not like I expect her to get over her son being killed. It's just, this is a horrible, horrible idea. Like, this is some Marvel movie shit. You do not become friends with the man who killed your son. You don't. And you also don't, like Kratos, the, the, the god, the gen, <laughs> the guy who genocided a pantheon of gods is not going to be like, oh, this god is trying to kill me, but she's my friend. I can't hurt my friends. Yeah. Oh, he's mature now. He grew up. Fucking piece of shit. I, I, I swear to God, if one, like, 35-year-old man-child with no kids and a hundred Funko Pops is going to try and tell me about maturity... Eat a fucking dick, dude. Portals. 
Why couldn't they just do that at the start of the fight? If portals can chop people in half, or decapitate them, couldn't they have just like closed the realm tear at the start of the fight? Kind of an obvious plot hole, don't you think? You had a way around Odin's curse this whole time! No. I discovered it once you unlocked realm travel. And it solves very little. This form is extremely limiting. She was stuck as a bird, though. I don't know. Can't Kratos close the hole or something? Oh. Look at her. The super mega badass that she's, like, crying over, like, tearing a fucking forest heart thing. Oh my god. Look at Kratos groveling in front of this strong female character. I'm sorry I killed one more god than I should have. You say this as if, like... The Greek gods didn't have families. I mean, they were a family. Most of them were related. <laughs> and you killed all of them without mercy. Forgiveness can be powerful. Yeah. Even for the That's unworthy. My wife, Faye, taught me that. Hmm. I hate every character. If it was possible to hate every character, I think I hate every character. This is just modern woke writing, is every character is unlikable as fuck. Like, Long it's... Your own selfishness hurt the person that you care about the most. Everyone's crying and apologizing. How mature God of War is. They're, they're expressing their feelings. Oh. Oh, I missed you so much. Or is this soap opera shit? Yeah, I, I know. Uh, who? No one gives a shit. I don't give a shit. The sword guy do anything? He has a sword. Why does he just exist? Is he like someone's self-insert? If this was God of War 1, 2, or 3... Any of these mounting sections, like the beginning with the dogs, or when we were riding that huge yak with uh, uh, Angraboda, the black chick, or any of these boats, you would have been able to attack. They would have designed a section just for this. You could hit square and triangle and hit stuff, right? Because that makes sense. If, you're, if your goal is to design a video game... Then you try and make things feel unique, have the encounters stand out in some way. In a modern, shitty, cinematic Sony game, you're instead just, oh, row, row, row your boat. Like, fucking, what, why? What, fuck you, dude. <sighs> Anyone who thinks this masterpiece has shit taste and should never be listened to again. I'm serious. He's that far behind. I can't believe it. this is that far behind, after that long. He didn't immediately bolt after his son as soon as he transformed. Are you fucking kidding me? It's so poor. It, oh, great writing, guys. Great writing. Told me. Heimdall intended to kill you in Asgard. Heimdall? The Norns? I thought you didn't believe in that. How could Kratos not believe in that if he literally killed the fates in his realm? That doesn't make any sense. I didn't know it then, but I accidentally oh, put his soul into my knife. He put his soul Souls into the powerful, knife. So I thought maybe Fenrir's could. Uh, yeah, let's see if it's up. See, they they subverted your expectations just to actually do it anyway. So now Garm is effectively Fenrir. Okay. I don't like the message of. Uh, I feel like under ten layers of of deeper meaning. The message here is, trust your teenage kid when they make a life-changing decision, like chop their dick off. I genuinely forgot who Tyr was, yeah, because he's done nothing. They built it up at the end of the last game, as like, oh, this is the next big quest. Well, because they had to combine two games into one, you get Tyr in the first few hours, and then he does nothing of relevance. Ever. He's clearly fucking useless, Lix. Is there any unfinished business in other realms you wanted to take care of? I'm sure the lad would love to help. They're like, please go do our side quest, guys. We spent we spent months on our generic shitty side quests. Please do them. This song was almost decent for a bit. 
It's from hell on. You can't add memorable Rondo music in video games. It might dorm. distract from uh, the awesome super special there, combat and I, maturity I or something. And now you this is what I'm talking about. Like, I find a new way to get does this sound like two gods talking to each other? And you find a way to make it better. Well, that's certainly true. How? In all the nine realms, did you manage to kill Heimdall? I knew our spear was. Does do no the one trick. believe that Kratos killed well, like a whole pantheon Ragnarok, of gods? Everybody. I feel like constantly they That's act right. shocked when he killed another god. The plan is to kill Heimdall first. Oh, wow. Okay, Heimdall. Let's see. Never loses. Sees everything coming. Unpopular at parties. This won't be easy. Kratos, I've never seen anyone so much as lay a finger on him. Not one. You're gonna lose her. You may be working with All Father and enjoying his little. It's a lot of balls. Prediction. But stay out like of my family's business. Kind of seems out of character. It's just, I don't understand what's the point. We already know Thor's <gasps> gonna die. So why, like, I don't know. They're trying to get us Was to care about him. I don't know what you're talking about. Like, oh look, about. he's not just a dickhead. <laughs> We're here for you. Mom and I are here for you. Is this really the right time for this? Even when you're here. Is this really the right time for this? He's an Mom, alcoholic because his daddy you know doesn't it. love him. This is really what I wanted in God of War! God of motherfucking war, dude. Oh good, a character. He's talking about how worthless Tyr is good. To use this. We can slip into Asgard and do it ourselves right under his nose. We gain the knowledge we need to shatter this prophecy of war once and for all. Except begging your pardon, you don't have a way into Asgard. Or, or, horn, don't they? what if oh, so you using the mask Asgard, and gazing into the tear is what causes realms. Ragnarok? Are we not going to think of this as a possibility? Please, I feel like just I just thought of that immediately. I don't, you know, are none of the characters going to think of this? Whatever, who cares? Now we kill Odin. And anyone who gets in our way. Yeah, why is Freya more god of war than the actual god of war? <laughs> Leads back to vengeance. Yes, Kratos, that is who you are. You are vengeance. That is that is your character. And that's not necessarily bad. So that was a completely pointless scene. I love how Brock dying was kind of pointless because Kratos managed to get the mask anyway from Odin. How is this mature and real? A, a boar is a black guy. What, what are you talking about? What, what do you mean? Like, Tyr didn't do anything of relevance, so it doesn't really wow. matter that he was Odin, it, you know? I, I guess I should have guessed, yeah. just because yeah. they didn't do anything with him, but because the writing that, was so bad for a lot of the game, the I just, I didn't think they would do that. The That's my no. bad, I guess. See ya, Loki. Take care. Yeah, I don't know why exactly they're doing this. I'm surprised they didn't just roll credits. Huh. Well, I'm not that surprised, but him. they should have just rolled credits. I need you to hear it. I appreciate you. I can't so leave. Much. I don't know why. Oh my God. I, love you too, little I appreciate you so Vini. much, Vimir. Everything we've had about together for. You too, Hildas Vini. Angry so Boda didn't even you. fucking do anything. So why did she exist again? Oh right, diversity points. Right. Later, Game's not play. woke though. Okay. Ten out of ten. When death arrived, he asked why the old man had called for him. Oh God! This callbacks don't work if they happened like one best. hour ago. If they try to make another God of War with Atreus as a hero, I will not play it. I swear to you, I will skip it. I will review anything else. That's a promise. Remember in games when you could just hit something? I want I want Atreus to die. Like, I want Atreus to die so Kratos has the will to, like, be the angry god of war again. Wouldn't that be so based? Kratos is a hero now. Miss when Kratos used to fuck hot girls. Now he sucks. Yeah. We are down here to help you. you I know that. But I'm usually the one who drags us around trying to rescue animals. Why do you care so much? Jesus Christ, man. Stop asking the same question. No. 
Okay. Maybe he's trying to help his son. I know that's crazy. Kratos, Kratos being a good dude, I don't believe it either. But <laughs> really, I don't. But uh, I this is like completely pointless dialogue right now. Like completely fucking pointless. Father, thanks for bringing us out here, but you don't have to do this kind of stuff just to keep my mind off Ragnarok. You know? This was not a distraction. No? Then why are we really out here? Have you ever considered? He just wants to spend time with you, lad. While he still can. Really? We do not know what lies ahead. But if Ragnarok approaches, I wish to enjoy the time we have left. I... I don't know what to say. Thank you... for bringing us out here. I'm glad we did this. As am I. A cream A cream Imagine I like Imagine it. if they subverted our expectations in like an actually interesting way and Atreus just insulted her constantly. Would that not be awesome? I think that'd be great. This is God of War! <laughs> Slaughtering the gods and screaming is more mature than this. I, I will never let that go. I will argue that... I will die on that fucking hill. This isn't who you want to be! Shut the fuck up, Mimir! This is exactly who I want to be! Crush his face. You don't care about anything beyond yourself. Beyond the monster. Who kills without cause. Like a Sigma male Chad. So, you know, there's toxic masculinity is dead. Look, guys, it's a whale. Let's stab it in the eye. That's what Kratos, the real Kratos would do. Why can I not stab it? And I didn't know what it was like to be chained in one place for years at a time. With nothing to occupy your mind but pain. Why would God of War, of any franchise, try and teach you about morality? Why can I not stab it? You know, now that I know more about the Dark Elves, I wish we didn't have to fight them. They attack us. Well, this is their home. And considering what happened the last time we were in Alfheim, can you really blame them? Oh boy, more God of War teach me morality. Basic... Yeah, Sony games are so mature, dude. What if we're the baddies? Oh my god, crazy, dude. I never- that's- that's a, who would have thought that? That's nuts. I suppose I should expect nothing less from half-breeds. Don't call me a half- <laughs> <laughs> I will call you whatever I like. <laughs> have a lot to learn little girl starting with who your yep. family is. Heimdall is the supreme gentleman. Like if any bread tuber wanted to take me down, they could just pull up a bunch of stream clips. That's all it would take. You know what banter when I was a kid was full of? It was full of slurs. And when you have slurs, then your banter actually has power. I fucking hate wokeness with every fiber of my being. I despise it. I try to keep those segments of the, oh, the uh, to videos to a minimum, but it's impossible when modern games are so... So disgustingly poisoned General. by leftist ideology. Sure. Like this input reading, uh, I was gonna say a word, I stopped myself, thank god. Uh, the, no, this bundle of sticks, sorry, so I don't know. <laughs> it's like they want us to hate her. How could you still like her? I know Redditors are like soy boy cocksuckers, they're all secretly gay. It's like, here's the thing. Like, if you're an actual cuckold, I mean, and I mean literally, not the meme version, but like, you know, you get off to men fucking your wife. You're self-inserting as the woman, you're gay. There you go, boom, there's my theory, that's, that's my dis- <laughs> That's, uh, that's- Never mind, who cares, whatever, I'm, I'm correct. We don't need universal healthcare, you wanna give these fat fucks- You wanna pay more taxes, this is what the Euro fags- Oh, it's fuck, I said it, Euro- Whores, um, you're a whores. Don't understand. <laughs> Those blades, 
is that you guys pay like over half your income to the done. government who who fucking stabs you in the back and you have no rights. In some way I do want to talk about how the women I mean I already mentioned like the female characters take charge and are always right or whatever. For those of you who are here, which is probably not most of you, if you watch the uh oh look a whammon. I love beating women with my fists and my giant shield. Diversity, the strength of diversity. We have female enemies, which means incels can beat the shit out of women and get away with it. At least I get to kill women. Awoke. I mean, I don't know. Freya stabbed Kratos and they're building her up to be a badass or something. That's about it, I guess. Just female enemies. The scene was definitely side? written by a woman. <laughs> Why'd they make Kratos into a huge wuss? Because women and Anthony Birch wrote this story. There were four female writers on this, right? That's that's what people were saying. Someone told me there's four female writers on this game. I know Alana Pierce was one of them. Yeah, Alana Pierce was one of the women. And we already know there's at least four diversity hires on this show. In terms of, in the writing staff. Alana Pierce was bragging she got to write, but she's not credited as such. We're not she worked on the accessibility for dumb people. Would that be the really? So she didn't house? actually write? Is that what you're saying? We were all... Maybe her writing was that bad. There was still four female writers, though. And look, he's on the ground, she's standing up, so they're already making him look inferior. Uh, they're definitely... This is an agenda here. There's a fucking agenda here. Alana Pierce. And never mind. I'm, no, I'm not gonna say anything. I'm gonna get in trouble. I'm gonna get in trouble. Where are your parents? This is fucking. It's fuck all. It, you know what? A any person who ever simped for her needs to be executed. And. I'm sorry. I, I can't say what I want to happen to Alana Pierce on YouTube. But I can say every simp should be killed. She's gonna peg him. Maybe. Maybe. Maybe that's the only way that... Fuck. I gotta be careful about what I say. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful. I gotta be careful. Oh. Oh, man. <laughs> Woman beat help? man at no, thing. I, I think I got it. How about... I mean, granted, he's never done it before, but still. Uh... <laughs> Woman has to save a man. Again. Oh boy, she wins. She won again. Thank you. She won again. She should Sorry, peg she him. So Just peg you. Atreus. God, this is cringe. The cringe levels. The through the roof, dude. And all these badass women. Except, look, she can't even keep her emotions together. She was a super badass in the fight. More female enemies, by the way, guys. A lot of badass women in, in uh, the Norse dimension. Don't ask questions. As many of our people as possible. My responsibility. One you didn't take seriously then, and from the looks of it, one you don't Woman know. good, man bad. This is a There's no way that would hold Kratos. Not quite yet. Whammon. It's a... It's a strong female character here to actually the save the day, not the main the character. You have no hold on me anymore. Wow, so brave. How good you Stunning and please. fucking brave, dude. Not woke at all, guys. Not woke at all. Oh no, look Let how strong she is. You. She's very strong. I'm weak. Look at how weak the man is, and the woman is very strong. Okay, you, you know, do we want to talk about women? I, I suppress it, because I, I hate to say it, I, I never would have guessed me of all people would have female viewers. I mean, I do self-censor a bit, but regardless, you know, we could talk about women and why I'm in the situation I'm in, but I feel like it's just a bad idea. As I've already given YouTube enough reason to ban me. <laughs> Search this is literally, this guy doesn't need to exist. It's just the like they needed a black guy, because they had a black girl, so they needed a black guy. Since your last visit. I guess. So make I just, worse, there's no, there's literally no other reason for this guy to exist. If I was working for GameStop, it'd be like, fucking base, dude! I'll ring up that <laughs> refund right away, even if I get fired. <laughs> I want to say, I wanted to say something. I want to say a slur, but I can't say it. Imagine if Kratos was racist. You know how... <laughs> They, they would never, they would never dare. They would never dare. Kratos can't be interesting. He can just grunt and say 
wise, depressing yes. things. But so, the remains me the and her, we obviously need to breed. To walk your and then the I execute all my sons. And then breed with the daughters. Execute all those, the grandsons. Breed with... <sighs> anyway, uh... <laughs> anyway... <laughs> The slurs have been taken away from you, so you use monkey emojis. He's like the showrunners of Big Mouth. They're romantically interested in babies. Bullet with the anti-Semitic remarks. Better Someone's gonna use your feeling clips against you. Squabbles. Go ahead. Come on. I'll dude. stand behind that one. The ones that I'm worried about are the, <laughs> uh, you know, talking about them, Not right? You. Well, I'm a nobody, so as long as I don't do anything the algorithm triggers or, you know, do something nobody watches, then I can at least reference something that we all know what's going on. Yeah. We all know what's happening. Opinions on Jordan Peterson. He's sold out and he's controlled opposition now. Just look at who he's hanging out with. I don't know what to call him. Like, Team Republican... Uh... Something... Uh, I don't know, small hats. <laughs> There's no way to say it without saying it. Everyone wants there to be an equivalent to the Illuminati, but it just doesn't... Like, that's just not how it works in reality. There are multiple groups of people trying to bring down Western civilization, and they're not all on the same team. There's a certain uh, common factor between all the teams, if you do your research, obviously. Yeah. You know, certain... Ready Never mind. Anyway, you guys all know. I'm preaching to the choir. Look up some things I can't tell you to look up. <laughs> uh, things about... I don't know. 2% of the population controlling a significant amount of the media and the government. Wikipedia is not a good source for a lot of reasons. Like, a lot of reasons. It used to just be, oh, anyone can edit the page. Well, it's not even... It's not even that, actually. It's almost the opposite. Where... Many pages are constantly guarded by, su well, they use bots, but they're still subhumans regardless. For setting up bots to monitor pages. There's no making this right, is there? They started no. even, th because of the noticing, when we they've started removing justice. a particular justice. thing from justice the early life section of many pages. It is vengeance. That's why, that's exactly the reason why I'm suspect of people like, uh, Critical Drinker. Again, I'm not saying he's controlled opposition, but there's just something... I don't know, I guess when you condense a problem to the message instead of naming them, which, yes, I realize you can't name them, I'm not gonna name them on YouTube either. But I'm just saying, BP Jordy, I've already said too much politically. Like, the dog whistles are not, like, as whistly as you'd think. The amount of times I've talked about a certain group of people is bad, is far, it's already way bad, like, to, that's already crossed the line. Like, there's, there's no going back from that. It just shows how cowardly the right has become that there hasn't already been an uprising. I won't help the Founding Fathers would have started. Who are you? A boogaloo a long time ago. What the American government has done to us is far worse than than the British government did to the colonies. So I'm just saying. The problem is we're vastly outnumbered by normies. Wars are won by those that are willing to sacrifice everything. If you're not willing to take up that arms, the cost of vengeance. And I mean that literally. So be it. Then all you can do is vote with your wallet. Some of the snowflakes will release a video exposing you. Will you watch it on stream? Only if it gets a lot of views, I guess. So. I'm not gonna give attention to a smaller YouTuber for no reason. I, I realize the irony of this when fucking G-Man lives, doesn't want to acknowledge my existence. But I just think when it's like a tiny YouTuber who has no identity, it's a little different, you know? Like if I made... Like this, uh, what was he called? Some bread or something. You guys said his name earlier. Or potato, that's what it was. The potato guy. I don't think he is really a content creator, you know what I mean? I mean, maybe he is. It doesn't seem like it. But, I don't know. 
I don't know, whatever. I can just be a hypocrite, I guess. Who knows if I'll even ever be in a collab. I guess people don't want to address I exist because I have real opinions about video games. I don't think there's any game reviewers I trust anymore. I, I trust myself and my own opinion, that's about it. Genuinely enjoy your stuff, man. Keep being real. You're the rare exception in ocean of media. Well, thanks. It does mean a lot. I, I try. Being the one real gaming critic, just, it's not good, guys. It's not good. Everyone's against me. I don't even know if anyone has any real opinions anymore. It's just everyone is a fucking liar, I guess. Spoilers, the video is going to be called God of War Ragnarok is the new Last Jedi because it exists just to subvert your expectations. But again, all these people, these supposed people with good integrity that you can always trust if a game is good don't fucking tell you this so obviously this guy doesn't have very strong principles or is a liar as are many people on youtube the only people i start shit with are people i know you ever be invited on the sitch and adam show beats me dude i've never been invited to anything point 